Well, good evening. It is 7 o'clock. <laughs> That's a little bit. <laughs> And I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees, July 2nd, 2018. You could all please and uh, join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kelly, please let the roll show that we are all here, present. Uh, moving on to the approval of consent agenda. Has everyone had a chance to take a look at that? Any questions? Okay, motion be in order. I move to, I, oh, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, I would move to approve the consent agenda as submitted. I'll support. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion to support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Moving on to announcements and communications. Anybody have anything to offer? Um, yeah, I can first. start. I, I just wanted to let the board know I attended the SEMCAG uh, uh, meeting this past week, um, just as representing Lyon Township there. And uh, the, the theme of the meeting was uh, regional cooperation uh, for business development. Uh, you know, get industrial and commercial property sold and then try and help each other out. You know, if we can't help somebody out, you know, send them to a neighboring community within the region. So it's a very good meeting. Oh, great. That's wonderful. Um, I just have a question uh, about those closed containers at Walmart's parking lot. Oh, and yeah. I, I think we have an ordinance of yeah, and I think against them. I think, I think we do. We talked to, uh, Sent that to Carol. I'm not sure what she came up with. Talk about uh, donation bins. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a, a case back in 2015, roughly, um, that essentially gave First Amendment protection to some of those bins or to those bins. So, if you have an ordinance in place, Carol's probably looking at it and it has to be worded and structured in a certain way. Oh. I did send it to her right away. I did send that to her right yep. away, and I know she was looking at that. I just hadn't heard back. Very good. Uh, John, Go um, as, you, as you guys all know, I'm pretty active in the South Lane High School band boosters, and the band boosters and the students uh, wanted me to invite township board members as well as any of the public uh, to come out and support them this Saturday at uh, Car Wash. That's going to be at the First Presbyterian Church in South Lyon, mm. and accepting donations. <coughs> They'll wash anything. Uh, <laughs> So, except for maybe a train. I don't think they can wash a train. <laughs> but it comes pretty close to the church. So yeah. maybe if they stop, they could bring some buckets. It breaks down the track sometimes. <clears throat> there you go. Wash it up. Yeah. I just wanted to say we did our public test for the absentee ballots. Everything went well. So we went ahead on Friday and mailed out all of the absentees. So they should be coming in the mail to you, I would say, probably by tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday at the latest. If you don't get it by Friday, call us. I also want to um, say that we mailed out the 2018 summer tax bill. So again, I know it's, the <laughs> it's your annual love note for me, whether you like it or not. Um, but uh, and also had an announcement in it about the water system. So if you haven't gotten it yet, you should get it because mine also went out on Friday. So and they went down. So I can't wait. Somebody is going to come to the counter and say, my taxes went up, and I'm going to say, no, they didn't. <laughs> I don't get to do that very often. That's great. <coughs> hey, anyone else? Anyone? Okay. All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to the call to the public where we welcome public comment. Anyone in the audience would like to stand up to the microphone, talk about something non-agenda related, come on up. <coughs> like to thank you and Patty for helping me out on the grass situation and answering my question. Yes, my taxes did go down. And yes, I paid them today. I was here three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you guys. It will be done tomorrow. So right. it's been an ongoing thing. Sharon, could you give your name and address? My please? name is Just Sharon Shellafor, 57620 Pioneer Trail. 
Well, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, guys. Thanks. I love it. Really appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sharon. Anyone else like to come on up? Okay, seeing no one, uh, we're going to move on to the reports. And the uh, first report is DDA, and Tina's on vacation. So we'll go ahead and move on to fire. Brian, anything on the fire? Good evening. How are you doing? I uh, just want to let you guys know that uh, last week we had Camp 911. We had about 25 kids. I believe Chris, your daughter, mm -hmm. was in there. She had a great time. Um, Friday, we had a fire on W.K. Smith Commercial Building. Uh, believes to be electrical. Uh, private insurances right now are doing the investigation. Oakland County did their investigation, so now it's all in the insurance part. Knowing that, later on, I will be bringing to you guys the Lucas 3 uh, chest compression device. Hopefully, you've all had a chance to see the video. Mm -hmm. That is it. Okay, thanks so much. Thanks. All right, moving on. Lieutenant Venus, anything? Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, for the past two weeks, I've had a deputy, or two deputies, I'm sorry, in motorcycle training school or what have you, whatever you want to call it. And one's from day shift and one's from the afternoon shift, and they both graduated Friday. So mm -hmm. we'll be seeing uh, two motors throughout the township on days and afternoons. Oh, they, you know, it doesn't seem like saw it, one yesterday. It, it, yeah, <laughs> they, they right away when they they graduated Friday, and I'm sure Saturday they were out on the bikes. I mean, it was hot, but yep, they, they still hot. rode them. Um, it doesn't seem like much, but it is when you're trying to get around, especially during rush hour when heavy. It is much easier, and they can get on the trails, bike trails, the neighborhoods a little easier, things like that. So, they do have their benefits. And also, one of the deputies also participated in the uh, Camp 911 with the fire department, uh, which was, it's always a good success. We do it every year with them, and oh, that's it great. draws a lot of people. And like Brian said, the fire is still pretty much, it looks like it's electrical, but they have to wait for the insurance company and everything else to uh, weigh in to complete their report. So, but that's all about like, all I have. All right, Lieutenant, thank right. you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, moving on to the Planning Commission. Thanks, Patty. All right, we had two meetings in June. The first one was Monday, June 11th. We had five public hearings. Uh, most of them are on tonight's agenda. Uh, but we had AP 1826 Hobby Farms. We had AP 1827 Dumpster Enclosure Gate Material. We had AP 1828 Wireless Communication Facilities. We had AP 1833 deck set encroachment provisions, and we also had AP 1818 setback <coughs> encroachment provisions that went along with the first one. So those were all uh, recommended to the Township Board by the Planning Commission. Um, under new business, um, we had uh, uh, the Meadows of Lion PD, and that was uh, also approved and recommended to the <coughs> Township Board, which is on tonight's meeting. So then our next meeting was Monday, June 25th. We had two agenda items. One was the Lion Grill expansion. And um, that one uh, we approved, but with some conditions. Uh, uh, Stefan had some really good comments about um, expanding their bathrooms and um, a few other items. And then under new business, we had the Wallbridge Industrial Park site plan review. And um, that needs to go to the ZBA and come back to the Planning Commission. So um, those were our only two agenda items, and that concludes my report. Perfect. Thank you. Lisa, I think you had one this time. Yes, yes, we did. Uh, we huh. had two items. Um, here on Valley Outfitters, dealing with some sign issues, and uh, some two of the variances were approved. One of them was not, and he plans to come back with a, uh, a monument sign, which would I think really have a nice look to uh, to that sign. And then we also had Lion Grill. I believe we sent it back to the Planning Commission, and then um, you guys were taking a look at the sign. Is that how it worked, Patty? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then are they coming back to ZBA? They have to? Yes. Yeah. They'll okay. be they'll be back for the sign variance. Okay. So then they'll be back 
Um, and that was all we, uh, that's all we have. Perfect, thank you. Uh, moving on, Park Advisory Board, and I'm not sure who takes that. You um, take that, Michelle? I can if you want. Go for it. Okay, all I have is, um, uh, they worked on their bylaws for the advisory board. We're looking to change those, and um, Robert felt that they might be ready to give to the board next next month, so in August, to run it by the board of trustees and figure out exactly if that's what we're looking for from them, and we'll go from there. I know Robert wanted to <coughs> hand it out a little earlier, like maybe this meeting, and get some more input, but um, Brian really felt that we should wait till next month, so that's where we're at. Okay. Sounds good, thanks. Okay, Bob. Uh, Thank you, John. Um, we've been working, micromanaging, and trying to take a hard look at the mowing that's going on and trying to take over more and more of that. Uh, the sidewalk at Rice Street has been promised to us that it will be done by the time school begins, uh, by Bowley Construction, and the lights are imminent any time it's taken about six to eight weeks to get the poles in and just when we thought we had them another one got knocked down about a week ago and that one's been ordered so hopefully in the next week or so at least the three will be put up so with that said that's my report thank you hey bob real quick on the yeah. sidewalk on rice street <clears throat> how how many flags did we end up uh, replacing quite a few i think right oh yes it was uh 700 and like 48 linear feet okay wow, it was quite a long it's in fact it is from the parking lot of dolson to milford road on the south side and that was basically and no, no curb and gutter though um, that was basically it was beyond repair and there was that a is lot correct. Of kind of dirt showing and yeah and in fact a few thing. spots john flags were totally missing yeah Okay, well, that's that's great. Okay. I'll get that done. Thank you. Uh, planning, we got the big letter. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, you Anything good else that? to add? Everybody to get a chance to go through that. Any questions for Patrick? Patrick. Okay, that winds up our reports. Uh, moving on to the approval of the agenda. And we do have some, uh, we have some things to do on this. And uh, <coughs> number one, that, that we need to delete Lion Preserve PD, they called and asked to be removed. So that would be C, your unfinished business. Um, and then I'd like to go on to new business. We also had uh, G in the G column, the consideration of the ordinance on the wireless communication. Our attorneys asked us please to remove that tonight. Um, they have some more work to do on that and they're not quite ready. And then I would like to add a under C in new business. I would like to add a C1, and it, it will be a discussion about the sewer plant bar screen room enclosure. And I need to do it that way, and I will explain that when time comes why I have to add it like that. I, mean, I think that's about. And I think we also uh, talked. Yes, uh, I was uh, yeah. wondering if I could request <coughs> to move um, item H, the uh, approval to purchase Lucas 3 chest compression systems, to um, the top of the agenda for new business. And then also the uh, item C and C1, maybe A in new business, and then the Lucas systems to maybe B and then move everything else down. Um, I know with both chiefs out of, uh, out, of um, out of town right now that perhaps uh, okay. old there might want to go home a little bit earlier tonight Please. than that to be with his family. And then um, I think we also talked about the uh, wastewater system being uh, an item closer to the top of our new business. <coughs> so you'd like to take H and move that up to? To create that as B. As B. Okay. And then move C and C1 to, to B. A. Okay, and then just move B under C. Okay, C. And C. then move everything else down. Everyone get that? Yes. Okay. So the, the consideration for the road closure will move down under the water plant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other? <coughs> Anybody need to add or delete anything that they see in here? All right, then a motion be in order. 
Motion to approve <coughs> the agenda as amended. Support. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> all right, moving on to unfinished business. Uh, Artesian of Pioneer, Ed is not with us tonight, but I think uh, Bob yeah. has been actually following the system pretty well, and he's got some things that nope. he can tell you. Um, let's speak of the water tower first at Nine Mile and Griswold. I get a lot of calls from the public on this, and it's easy to see the progress that's being made there. Uh, each ring that is poured is seven feet tall, and they have poured uh, four rings so far. So we got 28 feet of height over there right now. They've taken the week off. We're not going to see any pouring this week, but things are in a go for it mode and they feel very good that uh they're gonna have 150 foot of height come uh early august that's how fast things are moving out there so we feel pretty good about it the crew that's building out there uh built four to six of these every year so this they know exactly what they're doing and things are moving very well and at uh, Woodland Water Treatment Plant, uh, there's going to be a first major pour of concrete tomorrow. And uh, that is moving along beautifully. Uh, a lot of re-rod has been put in. Uh, the platforms are set. And this is work that doesn't look like it means a lot, but it's the whole base. Okay, it's the core of the system because this is what everything is going to sit on. And we've talked to the residents that lead up to that in that uh, culvert there. They all know what's going on, or the call to sack, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and things are going very well there. So I feel really good about it. When we get calls here, we're <clears throat> explaining the water system to residents with the understanding that help us get through this summer and come uh, around Thanksgiving we're going to be online with this new system and the days of uh, iron water are maybe going to be history for us and i'm very excited for the residents of the township for that so okay excuse my voice tonight okay. any any questions for Bob at all anything i mean it, it is moving very very well. very good okay seeing no questions let's, let's move on to the consideration of the adoption of the Mandatory ordinance uh, township. This is for submission process to be more consistent. And this is a second reading. <clears throat> these are a, a lot of housekeeping things tonight. I'm trying to put these ordinances with a little better, plainer language. And this is one of them. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that uh, we adopt ordinance 196 18. I'll second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on, this is another uh, text amendment. This is the consideration of the adoption of the ordinance for decks. And this is also a second reading. And again, this was one that uh, maybe needs a little conversation. I don't know. Um, but it's out there on the floor for approval and, uh, and adoption. Some comments <coughs> of there's a discussion before that or yeah you can go ahead and you can, we can discuss it right on the board um, and I, <clears throat> unfortunately I wasn't here for the first reading I was um, a little bit late coming to the meeting and um, did not have a chance to see it at its first reading but um, we have had consistent issues with decks and setbacks and patios and um, we've had those problems in Woodwind we've had them in Saddle Creek we most recently we had them in Oak Ridge and um, I know that Chris Enlow and I have both mentioned um, the, the concerns that we have had, and I'm sure, I, I believe some other board members have also mentioned it. But um, for instance, with the Oak Ridge uh, development, there were 17 lots that would have had to be deed restricted because of setback issues. And my concern with uh, this particular text amendment is that um, I worry that the developers may just become uh, a little bit more lax in trying to make a uh, um, you know patio or a deck actually fit within those setbacks and um, so I, I'm really not comfortable with this particular item and um, 
you know, I, I just feel like that maybe the developers should start making plans that won't have so many restriction issues. Um, we have design standards, and if we don't require them to follow the design standards, I don't really know why we have design standards. Do you know why this is a problem, Lisa? I, I'm sure that you get a, a lot of phone calls. No, do you know why this is a problem? Why we have to do this amendment again? Do you know why? I'm... <clears throat> Because we changed the amendment, this this was pretty basically what we had in place before we changed it, so that we would allow people that are in woodwind to build a larger deck because they they needed they need to encroach into their setback. So right. we went township wide, and this was for a person that we all know mm. that we changed it for them. We went township wide, and we changed this ordinance so that you can encroach into a setback ten feet. Okay to make it so that he could put a deck on his house. What we did by doing that is we took the, the residents that have setbacks from their property line to the back of their house at 50 feet, we, we scaled them back to only going 10 feet. So we had people on one side of the fence that were building their decks 15 foot to the property line because of the 10 foot that we changed it to, this board changed it to that. And then across right in the back rear yard, across from them, these guys had 50 foot setbacks that could only put 10 foot decks in. You see, that's why this amendment, this amendment's being changed because we made a mistake by moving the other one, only allowing them 10 foot into the setback. <coughs> kind of understand what right. I'm saying? Right, I mean, I, I understand that, but I mean, then this becomes... This puts it back what? to kind of where it's at. Yeah, th this actually will let the people that have 50 foot setbacks have a 16-foot deck. I, I don't know, Patrick, you could probably explain it better, but that's that's what it's all about, basically. Yeah, and to uh, to pick up uh, on that, where, uh, where we are with it now is that um, anybody can encroach into a rear yard setback up to 10 feet as long as there's a separation distance of 25 feet. So, for example, if somebody had a 35-foot rear yard setback, they can encroach the 10 feet and then they keep the depth of 25 feet. Um, what that has caused, especially in some of the planned developments that have 35 feet right up to the rear of the house, somebody can only have a 10-foot deck uh, um, to leave that 25 foot of space. Um, one of the issues that we have with uh, some of the PDs is that um, with the uh, preservation of open space, those lots get smaller and smaller, even if the density is not increased that much. And so they'll, they'll actually have the building envelope and the house will occupy most of the envelope, leaving 35 feet to the rear lot line. So uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, calls and requests for something more than a, a 10 foot deep deck. Um, we also looked at some other examples, uh, some of the non-PD examples in the township, and uh, we have a couple examples that we cited in the R0.3 district. That's a minimum rear yard setback of 50 feet, so if someone had a 50-foot setback from their house, um, they would have a 10-foot deck, and then the rest of the 40 feet would have to be a uh, setback area. Um, and then uh, the other item that we noted here as an example was uh, from a consent judgment that had a 25-foot rear yard setback where uh, they could do the 10 as long as they had the, uh, um, the well actually they couldn't do anything because they would have to have a depth of at least 25 feet so if it's a 25 <laughs> foot to the rear of the house they would essentially uh, not be able to have a deck unless um, an amendment to the ordinance or um, less likely an amendment to the consent judgment through the court to allow for a deck encroachment. So it wasn't uh, just the PDs, there were uh, issues in the R0.3 district and then there were issues with a uh, consent judgment as well in terms of um, having smaller decks depending on what area that we were in. Does right, that make sense? John, yeah, I, I, it does make sense and I just want to, I mean, we. We both know the, or we know the situation that happened. But that was a that was a uh, situation created by the developer or the builder who actually had the house itself into the into the setback. And so I that was not on the that was not the fault of the um, of the property owner or the you know the homeowner. But I just. Um, but we did amend the ordinance for that. Yes. So we I thought it was the, but it was just the. Um, uh, the PD itself, wasn't it? I guess the, all the examples you cited are referring to homes that are basically 
all the way, pushed all the way back to the edge of their building envelope. And I think that's where the discrepancy comes in, is if somebody is pushed all the way to the back of their building envelope, it's going to affect, you know, everybody. If if the building envelope were larger and their house wasn't set all the way back, then this wouldn't make a difference. They could do a 15-foot or a 20-foot deck. It all depends on the position of the house within the building envelope. Yeah, that's right. But we do have a lot of homes around here that have 50-foot setbacks that, that, that are all already have neighbors that have 16-foot decks because we changed this last year, and now it disallows them, and we're trying to make that right. Basically, that's what we're trying to do, make that all right again. But then this applies to anything that's that's new. Yeah. I don't see a problem. The, I don't see the... any problems with it at all. <clears throat> where's the incentive then for a developer to try to even maintain something so that it doesn't encroach? Well, I mean, I, I wasn't. Oops. Obviously, I didn't hear the discussion. You're good. All of the discussion at the planning commission meeting, and I uh, unfortunately was not here for the first reading. So I'm. We have a we up. have a mountain of people waiting for their decks for this ordinance to go through. Yep. They're they're desperately waiting, and they have been very angry. And I'm certainly for it, and the planning commission was certainly for it. So I'm ready to make a motion. Well, and I guess that's that's kind of the thing that I've I've mentioned before with these. Um, setback issues with these developers coming in because it's 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 coming back around to the individuals you know the developers promising a de you know promising the new homeowners that they'll disclose if the deck restrictions and i know some of these predate some of the times i've said it but it's it's still going to be an ongoing issue and you know they're obviously not disclosing this so we have people that are coming in trying to build a deck as patty said that can't do it because of this so here we are being reactive in our ordinance well they can't do it because we changed the ordinance yeah. right and it, and just now i mean last year we changed it and now we need to change it back so they can build the, their decks right and i'm not one to s stand up here and, I, and i've said this before with these plan developments and the restricted setbacks it's okay it's gonna happen this way they're not they're gonna come in want to build a deck <clears throat> I don't personally want to say say no to that because I don't honestly, you know, I don't like it when the government starts intervening on stuff like that or what, you know, that much. So I mean, I'm gonna vote for the change, but you know, it's just kind of, I don't know, that's frustrating. And I think it could be taken into account going forward. I mean, we've talked about this before, but you know, I, I see both sides of it. Um, I mean, I support making the change so we can get people decks, and you know, it's. Uh, they end up between us in this room and the developer mm -hmm. who sells them a house who's long gone and now they've built a new house and they can't put a reasonable deck on and they're stuck in the middle and yes I understand that certain things were done through the approval process but that doesn't help dozens of people at the end of the day who can't do what everybody expects they can do when they buy a house which is put a deck or a patio or a porch off the back I mean that's reasonable use of their land so I think going forward like today from now on, when these projects come in, they have the ability to be, uh, we have the ability to be flexible because as we all know, the PD process does not allow a person to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals either. So it takes that, that ability away from someone to go back in and argue that they have an extenuating circumstance due to their property. So that's sort of another catch in all of this is that the ZBA is not an option. It's one person trying to come in and amend the PD, which right. is months of time and thousands of dollars, and it's it's a, quite an uphill climb and not something any individual would want to undertake uh, by themselves. But um, I think we've got to look at it when we're going through the planning process and add another envelope for something like this when we're factoring in what kind of what how much of the area we're covering. So it's not just where the building's going to go, but where's your deck going to go? Where's your patio going to go? And have that shown on a plan so we know that everything fits, including a deck so we don't have to have folks coming in and asking for waivers or for help because right. they're up a creek without a paddle so well I think that I don't know I think that's where my biggest issue was is not so much the people who are already in this position where they they want to have a deck and they want to enjoy their their uh, the use reasonable use of their property and as Sean said that they can't come to the ZBA and the amendment process is so is so long that it becomes very very frustrating for them and so I absolutely want to have them uh, have that opportunity for, for these individuals who, who want the deck. Um, and there's nothing that they can do about it because, as Sean said, the developer is long gone. 
but if if we can start asking to see that on the newer developments where do you, where do you plan to put this deck and is there enough room i think that was where my concern was is like things just going all of our build, all of our design standards kind of going out the window um, I, don't, I don't see that happening i don't i don't see the way you look at it i think that people deserve to have a deck on the back of their house and some people don't need the yards that other people do a lot of people like to live in small backyards. A lot of people don't like to take care of their backyards. And it's, we're, we're here to help the public. That's what, what, that's what our job is. Uh, we see things. It, it's not always about the way we think people should live. I mean, these people want to put decks in their backyards. If they want to have 15, these are setbacks. They're not easements. Right. So I, I, I'm not sure why, and a deck is a very temporary thing. If anything had to happen, that could be taken off in about two minutes. And as long as it's not encumbering the sites of the people next to them, I don't know why we want to start telling people how they live in their backyards. And that's my opinion. I mean, we can sit up here and fight this thing back and forth all you want, but a deck is a deck. Everybody likes to sit on a deck. This is a very simple thing to do. And I don't know why we're trying to tell people what to put in their backyards. So that's just my opinion. So if we want to pass this, let's go ahead and make a motion to pass it, and we'll go from there. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 197-18. Uh, it is provisions for section 12.02 yard and bulk regulations to clarify the regulations applicable to open decks and covered decks and patios. I will second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this issue? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. I think people will appreciate that. I prefer sitting on a patio. <laughs> I just want you to know. I mean, a deck's okay, but patio, I like patios. I got you, I like patios. It's a lower fall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to the second reading of the adoption of the update of the engineering standards. This is also a second reading. I think we're all familiar. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 05-18 to update the engineering design standards as presented. Support. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, great. Moving on to new business. Okay, you guys might want to help me with some of this. We have some clock things on. All right, first of all, we're going to do the, uh, consider the agreement for the assignment and the use of the school resource officer for South nope. Lyon. No, 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 no. no. we're going to move to C. No. Do you want right. to move that one in front? Is yeah, that one? well, that's oh. going to be moved down the line, so you got to propose. Use. All right, then we're going to move to the CPRs. Yeah, you got to start with uh, Highland. That's what no, I asked no, for. No, Highland, 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 Highland treatment first. Okay. See, I'm all screwed up. <laughs> that's okay. All right. Here's my agenda. All right, this is the proposal for operating the Lyon Township water system from Highland Treatment. There we go. And I'm hoping everybody had a chance to look through that mm -hmm. and take a look at the, at the proposal given to us by Mr. Dowson. Um, and if you have any questions for him, I brought him in to go ahead and answer any questions. If you have any anything at all, he's here to answer that question. Anybody have any questions for the? I don't have a question, but I'd like to say a few Please. words about um, I am so happy that that Highland Treatment is working and um, doing our water treatment plant they have been absolutely fabulous for our sewer plants and um, I think you couldn't pick anybody better and the price is extremely um, reasonable a good price and uh, they have worked their batuties off for us, and uh, Bob can say it too. I am so, I'm just honored that you guys are actually working with us. There, you can't not believe how much work they've done for us, and accessible. And you can call them, and they answer our our residents, and they're good and they're kind. And I just can't say more than enough about them. And it's an honor to work with them. And I, I tell you, I talk to Anthony all the time, and we're really blessed to have somebody that really cares. I don't think they're their norm. They're not the normal operator that you think you would get. It's, 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 I couldn't agree more, Patty. I, I know it's. Same they are. Normal. I'm sorry. I don't want you to get big heads because. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I'll, I'll think about it. No, no. I mean, I just I cannot say enough about them. They're just fabulous and. Yeah, I, 
I wasn't aware until I read this that they had been operating our wastewater treatment plant for going on 12 years, oh, 11 and a half years. Fabulous. And uh, I mean, I don't recall there being any issue during that time, though I haven't uh, been on the board during that entire time. But uh, what stands out to me is that they're charging us a fair price. Um, you know, they're very familiar with the community. They're familiar, obviously, with the sewer system and probably have gotten <coughs> familiar with the water system even prior to getting involved in this capacity but uh, when you compare what we were paying to uh, Oakland County uh, compared to what we were receiving and uh, then also put it up next to this uh, this proposal uh, it's it's staggering it's staggering the savings uh, that we'll realize for our community and for our users and uh, it's to me it's un unfortunate we didn't do this sooner that's all so I'm glad we're doing it now I appreciate uh, the work you've done and look forward to the work you'll continue to do, I'm sure. I'd just like to say June 1st was the takeover, and with Highland Treatment, the staff in township here, we've done so much in 30 days, rewrote different ordinances, um, cross-connection program, operations, um, back T testing it's just been phenomenal what we've done in one month and now we're going to fine tune it and it's just going to keep getting better and better and better and it's an honor to work with these guys and bob thank you for all your work on that well, too i mean there are a lot of things i'd like to say right now yeah. but i won't uh, these guys but, are awesome yeah, yeah. I, I mean i'm just jealous that i don't have the hair of anthony <laughs> it is <laughs> you and me both <laughs> so thank you too bob for okay. all the hard thank work <laughs> <laughs> We're really fortunate. And and they also, um, you know, they do other water treatment plants, so they're very familiar with what they're doing and how to care for our plant, and I feel very comfortable. I think John does, too, oh, and I, Michelle. Yeah. Um, they're yeah. just... <clears throat> Uh, so that being said, I mean, does anybody have any questions for Anthony? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not for Anthony, but I did just um, just so people are aware. We how we ended up, I guess, in this situation, and maybe I'm asking for a little bit of background because I'm not entirely sure. But we had Oakland County running our system, and they kind of gave us a bit of a short notice of cancellation. Is yes, that kind of how sure. it happened? So Highland Treatment, who was already operating our sewer plants, kind of stepped in last month to. Kind yep. of bridge the gap until we could mm -hmm. get things together and um, that's why that there it's I guess the question on the proposal is what the the term is this um, uh, one year end of the year kind of, how's the term in this gonna be well this is the proposal and I like to put together if, if you guys are satisfied with the way this is written we'll put a contract together and it'll mm -hmm. probably be a year contract okay. and we'll see how they feel about that Okay. So it would be a year contract if you let us go ahead and uh, enter into it with the island treatment for taking care of our water. I think so. They kind of they gave a proposal number and everything. So, yeah, I think a, a year is a, a fair turn for them to get their feet wet. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's, funny. that's good. That's good. Hopefully my wife's not watching that one. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, then that's, that's up to a motion if you guys want to... If you feel good about that, you can put that into motion. Uh, I'll propose a motion to hire um, Highland Treatment Plant to work for our water treatment plant daily operations as described in their letter of June 5th, 2018, with the ability to have the supervisor um, uh, put together a contract with our attorneys. I think that's Okay, that's I'll support that. All right. Uh, any more? Any more discussion on the? All right. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. That's going to lead us right into the next uh, A1 here, and uh, this is a discussion. And I, I deliberately did not put this into a public meeting minute, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Is I, I have a reason for that, and I'd like to pass these out. If you guys would, would grab these, go ahead and pass these down. Anthony can be part of this discussion also. Okay, basically, we were left at the sewer plant with a bar screen enclosure that was kind of half done. Okay. Got enough? That's okay. You guys got enough down there? Patrick didn't get one, but... Patrick, okay. 
I've seen oh, yeah, it. Here, here, you can give him this one. I've seen it. Here. Okay, uh, we have a bar screen room that was kind of half put together. The bar screen in the sewer plant is probably the, the worst place on earth you could ever be. Okay, it is a very smelly place and it, it odors eminent out of there. I, I can't even tell you, it's, it's hard to even be around it. And, and the problem we have is the, the room was built with no enclosure. And so the smells that come out of there is really detriment to the people that live around there. So basically what we did is Anthony and Bob put together a, a quotation, an RFP to go out to get this screen room built around the bar screen room. And we had a walkthrough. We had several contractors show up. They walked through the entire place and we had a sealed bid opening and, and Bob was part of the sealed bid opening and we had one one person bid on it. Contractor. One contractor. Okay and the reason I, I put this out this way is because th this company that you see that gave us this quote is the actual company that built the sewer plant originally. Okay so they know this they know this place inside and out and the reason I put this, th this here is because we have some kind of constraints on this room and Anthony might be able to tell us and Bob might, the DEQ is on us about this odors and the way this thing was built. So we've kind of got some constraints on a time of getting this thing built. We got one quote and the reason I put this quote like this is we, I don't want this number put out in public unless <coughs> we have to get sealed bids again. I don't want this number out there but we had one show up we had nobody show up for the and so my question to you is does this board feel confident that we can go forward with this proposal or would you like me to go ahead and we'll go ahead and try to put it out again for you know try to get some more quotes in here John, I have a question yes you mentioned that the room wasn't adequately constructed uh, am I to believe that that was a design our previous engineer designed it that way so it was built the way it was designed. It was a poor design yes. from our previous yes. engineer. Yes. So they're not being hired to fix a mistake they made. They're being hired to correct a design problem that was not Absolutely. caught or corrected this, many this years ago. This company built it right to the engineered drawings. They did it exactly the way they were told. Okay. So everyone involved with putting this together feels comfortable with this contractor given... Oh, this guy's a great contractor. Okay. It is. They, they built a half a garage. Right. Anthony, you want to stand up <laughs> and tell them what the, what you go through? I mean, the, the reason that this thing is, it, we really need to get this done. Yes, what we have, the upper half of the building did get completed. That's where the screen is. So the influent, the raw sewage from the entire township flows into this building, goes through the screen, goes back into the treatment process. So underneath the building is a 10-yard dumpster. It's open to the air. All the debris that gets removed from the screen, it's quarter inch hole. So it removes everything that you didn't eat. So Ugh. debris, scraps, and it falls into an open air dumpster. We've covered it with plastic and tarps to try to knock the odor down. Uh, the flies, everything. I mean, it's it's a nuisance. It's The DEQ's on us to get this thing buttoned up. It should have been in an enclosed structure underneath with a roll-up door and proper ventilation. So it's just, it's open. And the residents can see it. We put the tarp over it just so they can't see it from their, sitting out on their back porch. Which is also part of it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, if the wind comes out of the east, it blows the odor from that dumpster into the Woodwind North Sub and into the school. And we get numerous complaints. Gotta fix yeah. it. I have been there during those easterly wind times, so mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. But that's our dilemma. Right. You know, we had five contractors yeah. walk the site. We had one bid the job. Most of them said it was too small of a job for them. They wouldn't even consider it. Right. That was the big issue was just the size of the project and the amount of trades that were going to be needed to do the project. It just, you know, the price came in where it came in. You know, we, we looked at it with our engineer. <clears throat> Leslie helped us with and also process results to the design of it. And, you know, their speculation prices came in a few bucks less, but everybody's busy right now. We're comfortable that this will give a solution for the problem. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to have, we're going to remove the large <coughs> heat vent the, the original engineer put in there, which we got numerous complaints. It was a silver stack 30 feet tall. So we've already had to cover that 
with brown aluminum to try to knock that down because we're getting complaints from the neighbors. So that's going to get relocated, new ventilation system put in. It'll have a roll-up door. The dumpster will be inside, contained. You know, no flies, no no odor. So sounds good. And the other situation we had last year is we got the cold winter. We had it freezing up too because it was yes. opened on the bottom and the small furnace that they put in to heat this room wasn't large enough. So Anthony was going there in the middle of the day and night trying to, with heaters, trying to keep this place from freezing. It was a very they poor design. They open air bottom so the wind went through the underneath like a tunnel and there's a hole in the floor for the debris to fall into the dumpster while that cold air went up inside and froze up the drum. In, in, in just just so you know, uh, we have uh, quite a bit of budget money left over from the the generators that we we haven't finished the generators and our budgeting. We were three shy of finishing it, and that'll take up a lot of this. So the amendment of the budget wouldn't be huge, and then next year we could put the generators back in and, and some of the other things that we need. But that this could be handled kind of on the generators just by the three we haven't got put in yet. I guess I, I had a couple things like I guess going along with the generator comments I and I just actually emailed Bob about it today about uh, if we're have, able to get those on at least the core generators this year um, so I don't know if that's still a possibility if we do something like this I mean both you know it's one of those things where both Chris we have projects are pretty yes pretty they are, important. They're very important we have two projects that are pretty important and, and actually this is the third one the core generators, we have three left that are core, <coughs> that we're calling core. We have this room that is important, and we also have the SCADA systems that we want to put on all the lift stations. And I'll tell you, that combined is a ton of cash, mm -hmm. just so you know. Now, it, uh, it's doable. We, we have the money to do it. Okay. Well, this, is, this is a utility, so this is very important. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. And I'm not know. saying not do it. I oh, just no, no. want to make just, sure we have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are in good shape. We are in very good shape. Um, as far as these design plans, I notice, at least just glancing at it, that they're, they're not um, sealed by any design professional. Um, that would be from process, right? Yeah, they're stamped. Well. You might not have a stamp set. Okay. As long as they are we just, have yeah. just yeah. because they, of the been original. Submitted, yeah. yeah, they've been submitted okay. to DEQ. Uh, they have a stamp set. They've reviewed them. They approved them. Good. So that was the same package that all the other three contractors received. Okay. Yeah, this is what went out on Mitten. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that way, just in case we don't run the same situation. Well, the surrounding community that our treatment plant mm -hmm. resides in, Remember, they're, this is their dollars that are, you know, everybody that's on the system is paying yes. this bill. Oh, yeah. So it's not really like out of the general fund or anything nope. else. So if, if I it's could vote, if I were on the system, I would want this. So I, I'm really comfortable with it. I don't well, think it's fair for a poor design that's been out there for years to continue to cause a public nuisance. I mean, it sounds awfully nasty. It's causing an operational issue as well especially in the winter time. I mean, I don't really see any other choice. Well, and, and like I say, I know it's short notice that, that you haven't seen these, but these are very thorough. They're, they're exactly what he needs, and, and it's, it's one bid. And, I and it looks like the work will be done by, it says October 31st is written in, so that's it was September 30th. Right. And because the proposal missed the June meeting, is that why it was delayed a month? Because yep, I can't correct. start, yep. okay. I think John was hoping to get some more bids, but we didn't get any, so. No. So I guess that's what it's all about, and, and I'd like you to speak up and see what you think, if you're, if you're comfortable with moving this one forward with one bid, or if you'd like to wait another month or so and try to get them out there and uh, see if we can get We'd have to rebid it, so it'd be longer than that. Well. I, I mean, that's what it would be so I'm comfortable with accepting this one if everybody else is I am too. And I consider this a health safety welfare issue I mean, it is it's pretty urgent it's not aesthetic it's not I mean it, it's it's an issue Lisa I'm comfortable with it you good? You know, you haven't said much I want to, you didn't want to weigh in on this I think if it's it's a need it is. I want so it is yes all right, well, I mean, it's up to you guys, so you... Uh, 
So you want a motion to accept the proposal? From RCL. From RCL. And okay. that cost. And that price not. All right, I will. Do you want me to share that at this point? I yeah, mean, you can, as long as you're comfortable with it. Do you need, can we not exceed that? Do we not, not yeah, exceed kind sure of we can contract? I mean, he's pretty thorough in that contract. Yeah. And there's a 5% contingency in there, right? Yep. Is that what I saw? I think I see yep. five. Okay, just flipping through. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept uh, the RCL construction contract for the bar screen enclosure at the wastewater treatment plant in an amount not to exceed two hundred five thousand seven hundred dollars. I'll support that. All right, we have a motion and a support. Uh, any further discussion on this issue? I just want to mention this will come out of the sewer enterprise fund. Yes, correct. It will come out of the sewer enterprise. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, Anthony. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Now do we get the CPR? We do. All right. Come on up. I love this. This is a good thing. You know, that's I'm going to show a little video first, but I've had uh, thumb drive issues, so sorry about that. A uh, little background, forming uh, consistent and proper uh, technique CPR in a pre-hospital setting can be difficult for us first responders, not only... Uh, Happens, but we have elements, uh, weather to deal with, things like that. At times, firefighters are, uh, are expected to deliver CPR for an extended period of time. Uh, our medical protocols can have us doing CPR up to 30 minutes uh, at a time before we can move on to the next step. What we're pro uh, proposing is the Lucas chest compression system. Uh, everyone, I believe, saw the video and got the literature on it. I know we did a demonstration for uh, Patty and John uh, last week. Uh, the Lucas chest uh, compression system is designed to help to improve outcomes of sudden cardiac arrest victims and improve operations for medical responders. Performing 102 compressions per minute with a depth of 2.1 inches. Lucas can be uh, deployed quickly with minimal, minimal interruption to patient care. Basically, uh, if we have a patient in cardiac arrest, we'll have them on their back. We slide a board underneath them. We will then hook the compression device two snaps in. We set the depth. We hit a button. does all the CPR for us. Um, it will tell us the proper time, the, the ratio. We do CPR to breathing. A button or a beep will come on and tell us when to breathe for the patient. So the proposal is to purchase two chest compression systems. Uh, we will place one in each of our rescues, uh, assuring the township full <coughs> coverage. Um, the request is for $29,727.66. Um, EMS transport this year has generated $17,366.15 in revenue. They'll cover the cost of one of the Lucas devices. And then uh, the second Lucas device uh, unit will come from the 2018 budget for fire equipment. Uh, time of order, or when we order, we're expecting two to three weeks delivery. If approved, uh, it may be even sooner than that. Well, I have to tell you, I, we, we went down and we seen this thing in action. Wow. It, it's amazing, it's amazing. I, it takes away all fault, I mean, it, it it's an amazing thing, and I, I think that our township deserves to have this for the resident safety of our residents, and it's, it's really, really an amazing machine. And Will this crack ribs? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either, either to do proper CPR, it's going to happen. Because I was told it's not being done correctly manually if you don't crack a rib. <laughs> it all depends on how the how the patient's built and stuff, but there I, there is a possibility. But you're getting the exact same compression every single time. That's amazing. Um, when we have to shock someone, usually we're doing CPR. If we have to shock someone, we have to take our hands off that patient. And with this Lucas device, it just keeps going. It's all insulated that will handle electricity. Good. Fantastic. Yeah, I think this thing will save lives. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well worth it. As a township resident, I'm excited to see this. 
Brian, Brian, thank you so much for having the demonstration and inviting. Michelle would have came, but she was so busy. She's been getting out the absentee ballots. But it was I so... the video. It's yeah. good. It was so fabulous to get to see the hands-on and actually meet the person that's selling it and how knowledgeable. And there were several of our firemen there. And to see it firsthand, what we're purchasing, um, it, it really made me proud. And... Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity, John and I really enjoyed it. So. It's, it's a battery operated uh, deal, and I think, what do you say, 41 minutes? It'll run continuous for 41 minutes, yes, I believe. Yes, it it'll have two batteries. And, they have and two you have batteries. two batteries. And then we could all, if we have to transport, we can plug it right into the truck. Yeah. It's fa it was on, fascinating. Run on direct power. This thing works so good, the mannequin can come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's two or one night. That's good. good. CPR. Like, huh. wow. CP doing proper CPR for a, a human, you're probably looking a minute to two minutes, and then you've got to rotate. Um, a lot of times we don't have initially a lot of people on scene. We're waiting for people to come, and you're just constantly rotating. It's exhausting. <laughs> In 30 minutes, uh, what protocol says, that's, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. So this, this essentially allows the other, uh, you know, the... Uh, first responders to do anything else that they yeah, have to do, on, patient work care. work on airway, get the patient ready for transport, um, collecting medical information while this is just doing a CPR. Um, if for some reason we have to backboard a patient or get a patient down the stairs, a lot of times the stairs are so narrow we can't do go down on the side with the patient and do the CPR. The, it, every time we, it just won't shut off. Wow. I look at it too is potentially it's it's taking a job of a first responder. It's doing a part of a job for a first responder. Yes. So in a major situation, which we never foresee, but we p plan for, it's it's really helping yes. do maybe half of a job. So another first responder can go and help other people in need. Yes. So I don't know how you put a price on that. And I mean, when Pretty I good. voted for the fire millage a few years ago, this is the kind of stuff that I wanted. Stuff that was cutting edge. Stuff that was going to save lives I mean I think we all did mm -hmm. and so I just appreciate you guys finding these things and equipping our vehicles with these things so they're out there working for the people who mm -hmm. who expect yeah I think know. he I think he told us that the Grand Rapids area the western part of Michigan is is kind of in they have they got them already yeah but southeastern Michigan is kind of slow to get them yeah, no one has southeastern Michigan is one of the last areas to really go to these mm. Yeah, for what it can do, I don't That's think amazing. the price is, is bad at all. I mean, it's not cheap, but, you know. And the, the replacement pads compared to the, the other devices out there, I think you said it was 20 some dollars to replace the, it's almost like a suction cup. Yeah, the okay. suction. That goes on. Yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah. everybody like the idea yeah. of this? Okay, well, let's we'll go I'd ahead. Like a motion to approve um, the purchase of two Lucas 3 chest compression systems. Support. All right. Motion support. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to consideration of the agreement for the assignment and use of a school resource officer for South Lyon High School and South Lyon Middle Schools. Okay. Right. And uh, um, do you want to talk through this yes. one? Yes. Okay. So. I'm going to let you. Uh, thank you. Um, the, the contract, I think, is a little hard to read and understand, but it, the contract is right. So I want to just go over the money dollar amount so that this board um, feels comfortable with it. So our contract at South Lion East for one resource officer for an entire year is $135,000, roughly $200. The school gets the resource officer for 40 weeks. We get the resource officer for 12 weeks. If you calculate the 40 weeks, it's $104,000, which we agreed to pay half of that fee. So that means the school is obligated for roughly $52,000, $52, but it's 51,995.38. And we pay the other one 51,000. The additional 12 weeks, cost the township 31200 So we actually pay approximately um, $83,200 for an officer at South Lyon East. 
So that's what we've had before. That's what's proposed this year for the East contract. Now, they're going to be adding an officer for South Lion High. And this is how the contract reads. Again, the same formula. The, the officer is for 40 weeks is um, $104,000 because we put in tw the extra 12 weeks. That would be split in half. The school's contract said that they will be obligated to pay their $52,000. Then on our $52,000, $45,000 will come off of that, and that leaves approximately $7,000. So $7,000 for the additional officer, plus if we want to do the 12 weeks, that would be another $31,200. So that's east. And then the middle school contract is totally um, the responsibility of the um, South Lion High or the South Lion schools. And uh, but if we wanted to employ them for the 12 weeks extra, that would cost us 31,197. So I hope that explains it because the contract is it, it was a little difficult and I appreciate Lisa called and we really put our heads together to understand it. It's it just, it's a little complicated how it's listed, but it's 100% right. And Amy and um, um, Randy. Randy's in the, well, Randy's in the audience, but Amy did a really good job. It was just, it's just how it's worded. It's a little difficult, but, and we went, oh, and Mark and I, so hey, I feel, I, I feel really comfortable with it. I, it, it's just a little hard to understand. Is there a correction for the South Lion East Exhibit C? Because it says the weekly cost for school year and then is 103991 and then municipality offset of 20,000. Well, what they okay. So Salem Township wanted their money to go to East. It it's just that's what the 20,000 is. It it it, it, it's hard to explain. They they think that they're they're they're, they're residents that go to the South Lighting School District. More is, to east than ever. Yeah, goes more more to east. It would be the same thing. However, so they're instead of forty five off of the high school, it's twenty off at of east and twenty five off of. Right. So, it, so they, I mean that's just the way they wanted. They wanted their money to be applied there instead of both the forty five at the high school. So basically, wherever it goes, it's less it's that we're paying thing. because we're paying for yes. everything. Yeah. Yes, does, correct. Does well, it then need to be that, amended yeah. in the exhibits because Exhibit C for South Lion High well, School Well, I don't think it's in. I don't it's their paperwork to, to show that the right Salem's going to East. Right. Well, I'm it, just saying I that think the it's Exhibit a, yeah, I don't C think it's in like our a, packet says 45000 so I, is, at some point right, would we amend? Right, it's got one place and the other place, so I, it would have to be, but... So then we would change that Exhibit C for to South Lyon High School to municipality offset B25. to 25,000? And that's the, that's the um, contribution to, um, from the city of South Lyon. Okay. So, yeah, we'll I mean, it all make sure. goes, it, it, in, it, it comes it, from the same pot. It but does, I just and we do, the, and actually Michelle, bless her heart, she does all the billing for it. April does. <laughs> well, April, sorry. Bless everyone. April does. But I'm just saying, it's, 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 yes. it's, it's, it's you know, once a month. But thank you. <laughs> and then, anyways, I just do the collecting. If another municipality chose to uh, <clears throat> contribute, right. would that go to the township's offset? And, it, and then if it's over that, then the, then the school district gets theirs reduced. Is what we but wouldn't it get reduced to South Lane East? That's not our agreement. Does that sound right, Randy? You're a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All so, right, so any any questions on this? Or? Yeah, I guess do we have to then decide because um, right now the South Lion East officer is the same as we had in the past, so that mm -hmm. really doesn't change the dollar amounts. You know, it is. Right. It's, it's it's the, the same. same. It is. So, for South Lion High School, we were the forty five thousand deduction is twenty thousand from Salem Township and twenty five thousand from the city. Right. Yep. So, thank you Salem Township and thank you City. Um, that leaves us with seven thousand. 
for the officer during the 40 weeks. Right. Right. That is correct. Then do we have to decide then whether or not we want to kick in an additional 31000 to have that officer for 12 stay 12 for weeks. the remaining 12 for the weeks summer. for the summer? Right. Lieutenant, is that even an option? Do we do we have the option once we hire them? Are we hiring them for the year, or do we have we the can. option? Or uh, I, I mean, that has been done in the past. Uh, there are other municipalities that do only uh, employ the officer during the school year. Hmm. However, I can put them to work in the summer. I have plenty of things that I would love to do during the summer that I can't just because of manpower. We the can do the extra, we could do extra liquor inspections, we can do extra tobacco inspections, the vaping inspections. Uh, around the holiday time, we can have extra patrol on the road. Uh, there's a lot of things that I can do with them for the three months that, uh, that they would be put back into the cycle of patrol. So and that's where they would go. This year I have them in the investigator role just because we're starting to get busier with investigations. We're starting to get more because of the population increase. Uh, and it's getting hard for one investigator to handle. So but that would essentially be three additional. Two, well, two, yeah, because we got Tom now. Would be well, the, it would be the, from Southline East, the one from Southline High School, and the one from the middle school. Middle school. Correct. So Correct. in the summer, we would have three additional yes. deputies. Yeah, because uh, from the schools. Right, okay. Right, 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 right. Right now we have, we actually be gaining two because we keep Tom, uh, or the officer that was at East. Mm -hmm. Uh, here for the summer, but if we decide to keep the uh, other two that we would be adding, they would be able to do those other functions or whatever we need to be done. If somebody has, anybody has input on something that uh, they'd like to see done, that's certainly also on the table too. Well, Mark and I reviewed his budget and they have a um, substantial amount to, to cover these two additional 12-week um, officers if, if the board so chose to do that and I'm 100% in support of that I don't think too many it's officers a police heard. millage so they right. he's got to kind of tell us what he needs and he's right. actually telling us that he could put these two additional officers in the summer in our township and this is a, this is all covered under his police millage that's yes. correct yeah and actually it takes Tom he just finished up the what they were done the 15th so he just now wrapped up everything that he you know from the previous school year so we have him still a couple of weeks you know into july finishing his report and combining all of his uh his statistics from the whole year but it, it is definitely better i would say i think we only have two municipalities that i can think of off the top of my head that only contract for the 40 weeks everybody like commerce keeps their three they put them back on the road and do exactly what i just said uh, i think highland this year changed over and is keeping their officer because think, it does help. I think, too, it, as you mentioned, with the holidays, yeah. and then also when those students are not in school, Absolutely. they're at home. And yeah. so maybe that, you know, could alleviate some of the difficulties and um, summer boredom sets in. And, yeah. and stepping up uh, patrol of the trails would be beneficial because so many more people are using those in the summertime. So I, I see this as an added benefit. To, uh, to have those officers stay within our community for the entire year. Even the kids, uh, uh, you know, we run into them all in the summer. You're going to run into right. them. And Tom's working. He, we actually I have another deputy because he wanted to work the road patrol. So I just took the seven to three deputy and put him in the investigator role and let Tom work the road. And he's running into students all the time. Yeah. And it's kind of it's kind of neat because he knows these kids. If they if he does catch them or they're up to no good or whatever the circumstance may be, he knows them and it just makes things a little easier i was going to say from a community policing standpoint having those three out in the summertime during the day visible and oh yeah at, you know knowing walking the kids through, faces right walking through the park just you know being them. there and yeah. and you know not necessarily just to like enforce but just to be present you know sure. and go around doing the same things they do in the school would really be i think a community benefit I yeah, think not. too the whole building relationships with them even throughout the summer if they do run into those students it's a, it's beneficial right yeah you get in some it, it, it can work a lot of different ways you get to know the kids no matter you know different ways when you're talking about camp 911 I mean I just see programs like that growing as well and if we're involved those officers it would make sense for them to be involved in and in sure programs like that with because they're not just at those schools they end up getting called to the other schools when there are issues too well, we had other, uh, we, uh, is it First Presbyterian down at Nine Mile and Pontiac Trail? 
Yes, uh, that's where the band car wash will be on Saturday okay. from <laughs> nine till three. They had their Bible. They had their Bible study. I think last all last week, and the uh, pastor called me uh, just before I went to my conference and said, "Hey, can we have a deputy there from nine o'clock or from like eight thirty quarter to nine till nine fifteen when the kids are being dropped off? And can we have a deputy come and stand by in the parking lot when the kids are being picked up?" And of course, I'm going to tell them, yeah, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make sure someone's there. But having the, the, the school officer would have been a no brainer. It would have been just call them and say, I want you there. Do, you aren't doing anything else but sitting in that parking lot until the kids get into the church and they get back in their cars safely and they're on their way. So there's a lot of things that do, I mean, not just during the school year, people's minds are set on these school incidents, even. Mm -hmm throughout the summer and activities where kids are, you know, exposed. So. Well, I think, you know, for, what are we at, $69,000 extra, we get two officers for mm -hmm. the summer, two extra officers yep. for the summer, so. I agree with that. I get, you know, I, don't so. I, I, I just say, like, I appreciate, Randy, you going to the uh, um, other municipalities and you know, getting some, so. I've got more to approach yet, but the, being the summertime and everybody's on vacation, I've had difficulty hooking up with everybody. But I'm going to continue to try to uh, raise money and even look at some private funds also uh, in supporting their efforts. And I want to, uh, Mr. O'Neill, your comment about the community policing, it's exactly what happens. These resource officers know these kids. They develop the relationships in the buildings. And when they see them on the street, it does make a big difference. Uh, the kids really relate to these officers. And they're, they're, the ones we have in place are really good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Just so everybody, I don't, I didn't touch on this. Uh, the school, you know, because we had to, we have to get the process moving along in order to have them in place at the beginning of the new school year. Uh, so we, they have already done interviews, and deputies have already been selected. We're just waiting for all the process to go through, and then we obviously have to. I, I think most of you know that uh, John has to write a letter to the sheriff requesting the officers and it has to go through the board of commissioners and then we can have the officer well we'll have it it's just the process of getting it and passing it tonight will give us plenty of time i believe to get a, get them in, get them trained they have to go to a training uh school for a week and then get them into school but i think it's going to be easy transition to what officer that they picked um impressed him very much and he's been involved with schools before so and just to confirm that the officers that would be selected, they would be the ones staying here over the summer too. Yeah, I would not lose them. They would be assigned mm -hmm. to Lyon, the Lyon Township substation. Okay. Yeah. Randy, thank you and the board and the administration for working with us on this because it's been very successful at East and we're happy to have, we're protecting all of our kids now at well, both I, high schools and middle schools. We need to thank you because the township has stepped up and really <clears> helped <throat> us uh, in really what was a crisis situation with uh, the parents demanding the protection after the numerous national events that have occurred, unfortunately. But you, you all have really stepped up, and for all the board, I want to say thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And I do believe that we're the last cog in the chain. I think the school board's already approved it, mm -hmm. right? Right. So right. it's up to us to make it happen. Do we have to approve all three agreements separately then? Yes, I, I would yeah, suggest doing that. Well, we might not have to do East because East is already. No, I think it's a renewal. What's well, a renewal? It's a renewal. Yeah, it starts okay. again. Okay. But yeah, then right. East has the twenty thousand from Salem that has. Yeah, we'll just it, so we just yeah. have to. Yeah. Amend. We'll just approve we'll that. We'll fix it. That we'll we have. Get that fixed. If you approve it, it, it we'll get it fixed. Just with an amendment. All right. I'll do one. Does it have to be part of our motion? You think? Because the exhibits are not. Yeah, matching. I, I think yeah, right. I think they should right. as amended, and then we'll okay. get six. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the school resource officer for South Lyon High School, uh, as submitted in the contract and including the exhibits uh, that are attached. Uh, exhibit A, B, and C. That's the township cost of the mm -hmm. thirty-eight thousand dollars. Let me scroll. I'm scrolling here. Yes, it would be thirty-eight two hundred. Thirty-eight thousand two hundred dollars. That's correct. Okay. Support. All right. We have a motion and a support for 
Southline East High School contract? Nope, Southline High School. Oh, you went high? No, I just started the list. List. Okay, with Southline High. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, just one. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, school resources officer contract for the South Lyon Middle Schools uh, for a township cost of the $31,200. Right. Support. All right, we have a motion for South Lyon Middle School, so you didn't get me. I'm in support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'll make a motion one. to approve the contract for the school resource officer for South Lyon East High School with uh, the contract and the amendment, or the uh, correction. The correction to reflect the 20000 from Salem Township contribution. I'll support that. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, Johnny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feature. All right, we have a motion okay. to support for South Lyon East High School with the amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, here we go. Thank you much. Thanks. Thank Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Those All right, moving on. Consideration for road closure for Pumpkin Fest Parade. This is a every year thing here. It looks like it's changed a little bit, though. Yep. I think that... Uh, is Phil here? I was going to ask. He may have the only working typewriter left <laughs> in all of Oakland <laughs> County. Um, it's impressive. <laughs> you see that, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, every year I'm impressed that it's still in operation. <laughs> it's got two. So I'll two? Be, I, is it a backup? Yeah. Okay. So all that we have to do then is um, instead of going from, um, I think it was at the eight mile subdivision, yeah, right. they used to go there. So now he's coming and starting at the middle school. So our portion will be the nine mile um, that he's asking for in Pontiac Trail there. Yep. So he's just looking for approval. I'll make a motion to approve the pumpkin fest parade road closure as submitted from the letter from Phil Whiteford. A member parade committee for the Pumpkin Fest of South Lyon area. Support. Okay, we have a motion on support to close Pontiac Trail. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on to the Meadows of Lyon PD final review first reading. Um, can we take that over? Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, the uh, Meadows of Lyon uh, plan development uh, has been going through the PD process for the last couple of years, and it was last with the Township Board for a preliminary plan review on April 3rd, 2017. So it's been a little over a year since it's been back with the board. Um, so I'll give a little bit of the background of the project itself and then update you on the Planning Commission's latest recommendations. Um, the location of the development is on the south side of Nine Mile Road, east of Griswold Road. Uh, the proposal is for a 35 unit single family residential plan development. Um, it's currently in the R1 residential ag district and is on the opposite side of Nine Mile Road from the Woodlands of Lyon, which is also a plan development. Uh, that one was approved in 2016. Um, the lot sizes in the Meadows of Lyon are a little larger than most PDs. The lots range from uh, just over 13,000 to just under 26,000 square feet. Um, there are a few constraints on the site um, that restrict uh, development in many areas, uh, including 27 and a half acres of wetland. Um, and there's also a rail line on the southwest and a 99 foot gas uh, easement on the uh, southeast to northwest direction on the property. There's also a 170 foot wide ITC transmission line easement along the west property line, uh, though it does not affect the parcel's development potential. Um, at the um, preliminary review, the Planning Commission reviewed the plans on December 12th of 2016, so uh, that was about a year and a half ago. And at that time, it approved a motion to recommend approval of the preliminary PD to the Township Board, uh, provided that uh, there's a minimum driveway separation distance of six feet for units nine and 10, uh, which um, in a few moments, uh, we'll get into that, uh, which is reflected on the final plans. At the April 3rd, 2017 meeting, the Township Board uh, reviewed the preliminary plan and uh, approved the preliminary PD subject to the review letters from both McKenna and CES. Um, 
as a note, the preliminary plan approval expires in two years after the date of approval. So even though it's been more than one year, they're still within their two year time limit to go through the final approval. Um, the final approval, which is this um, part that we're at, is the last stage of the PD approval process. And it requires a recommendation from the Planning Commission and final action by the Township Board. At its June 11th, 2018 meeting, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the final plan subject to conditions of the McKenna Review Letter and CES Review Letter. On page two of our review letter to the board dated June 26, um, I'll go through some of the review findings that we have for the final PD plan. Uh, first is compared to the preliminary plan, the net acreage of the open space uh, was slightly decreased from 23.9 acres to 23.3 acres. Uh, the change was made by the applicant during the engineering process where it was found that the area required for stormwater basins was uh, larger than originally anticipated. Uh, second, during preliminary review, the issue is raised that units 9 and 10 will have side-by-side -side driveways. Uh, so that uh, a note has been added to sheet FPD2 that a six-foot setback to the edge of each driveway will be maintained. Um, these are the only two units that will have side-by-side -side driveways. The other units will have driveways on opposite sides of the lots. Um, the third is that uh, Unit 5 was shown on the preliminary plan as having no separation between the rear lot line and the planned right-of-way line of Nine Mile Road. Uh, the same plan had a 35-foot rear yard setback calculated from the rear lot line. The applicant changed the lot boundary slightly, allowing for a 20-foot wide buffer area between the rear lot line and the planned right-of-way line that will be planted with six trees, um, which will be a combination of spruce, pine, and birch. Um, the building envelope of Unit 5 remains unchanged from the preliminary plan, uh, meaning that there is now a 15-foot rear yard setback from the property line. Uh, this change ensures that there will be a 35-foot setback between the right-of-way and the home on Unit 5. It just adds some open space in that strip. Um, under number 5, with the exception of Unit 5, all other units remain the same size and shape. Uh, under number six, um, since the May 18th version of the plans, um, the sheet um, composite utility plan has been corrected to remove the old parcel sizes, so that sheet is now correct. Um, under number seven, um, since the Planning Commission review on December 12th, there's been an updated traffic study that's been provided. Uh, this was reviewed by the Township Board at its April 3rd, 2017 meeting. Uh, the synopsis of the traffic impact study is that it found that a signal was already warranted at the intersection of Nine Mile and Griswold. However, the traffic generated by the meadows of line will not significantly impact conditions at the intersection. Uh, furthermore, neither a left turn nor a right turn treatment is required at the proposed site road to Nine Mile Road. Uh, this information again was provided to the Township Board when preliminary plan review uh, was done. Um, <clears throat> skipping ahead to uh, number nine, um, since the May 18th, 2018 version of the plans was reviewed by the Planning Commission, a sidewalk has been added to the northwest corner of Selma Drive and Hilda Drive to complete the crosswalk. Uh, sheets 2A and L1 must be updated to show the complete crosswalks at this intersection, and sheet 2A must be updated to show the complete crosswalks at the intersection of Hilda Lane and uh, Waggy Court. Um, number 10, since the May 18th version of the plans was reviewed by the Planning Commission, uh, the seven pear trees have been replaced with Little Leaf Linden. The substitution was a condition of approval by the Planning Commission as pear trees have a, a weak growth pattern. Um, we uh, recommend a few revisions to the plant list table on sheet L1 of the June 18 plans to be consistent with the actual landscape plan. And I won't go through each one of them, it's just a correction to the table that must occur. And finally, number 11, um, on the preliminary PD plan, the bicycle path extended all the way to the eastern lot line. Um, however, the final PD plan reviewed by the Planning Commission showed the bicycle path ending about 55 feet west of the eastern lot line. Um, at the June 11th Planning Commission meeting, the applicant noted the topographic challenges in extending the bicycle path to the eastern lot line and the potential for a future connection to the property to the east. Uh, the Planning Commission did not object to the applicant contributing to the Township Bicycle Path and Sidewalk Development Fund in lieu of this 55-foot segment, as well as the pathway that would otherwise be required in the wetland area to the west. 
Uh, since the May 18th version of the plans, uh, the applicant has added a mid-block crossing of the bicycle path to connect to the Woodlands of Lyon pathway on the north side of Nine Mile Road. Uh, next, um, there has been a plan development agreement that has been uh, prepared. Uh, we haven't uh, received any uh, substantive changes uh, from the applicant other than uh, the name of the entity, but uh, nothing major coming from the applicant. Um, so that, that has been prepared and it's in the packet this evening. Uh, in summary, um, our recommendation um, is uh, a recommendation of approval of the final PD plans. And again, this is a first reading of this. Uh, the proposed final plans for the Meadows of Lyon PD address the conditions of preliminary PD approval of both the Planning Commission and the Township Board. Uh, except as noted in our letter, the plans retain the same density, design, setbacks, and amenities proposed previously. Therefore, we recommend approval of the final PD plan subject to the following four conditions. Uh, first, that the plans be revised to include the following uh, updates to sheets 2A and L1 and um, updating the crosswalks. Uh, next, the plant list table on sheet L1 must be updated to reflect the counts. Uh, number two, that the applicant contribute to the Township Bicycle Path and Sidewalk Development Fund in lieu of the 55-foot segment on the east side of the site, as well as the pathway that would otherwise be required in the wetland area on the west side of the site. Third, acceptable review of the PD agreement. And fourth, any conditions of the Township Engineer and the Township Attorney. Uh, so with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, thanks, Patrick. Uh, anybody have anything for Patrick? Mm -mm. Okay, let's move on. Leslie, anything you got to add? Um, no, we just uh, uh, cite that there's a section of the pathway that, um, as Patrick stated, that is not included on the plan, and that um, this would be a contribution to the pathway fund, which we are in the process of estimating to be included in the PD agreement. Leslie, is that contribution for a an asphalt path, or would it be for the actual necessary, I'm um, assuming it would be a boardwalk that would have to be there? Is the contribution based on what he, the amount that he would actually have to? Well, I guess, I mean, that is something that can be discussed. I typically estimate them as an asphalt pathway, um, but this type of wetland crossing that would be a significant amount of fill to do the entire frontage of the section of Nine Mile um, with asphalt. <coughs> so it could be done either way. What does our ordinance say? I don't know if it states that level of detail. Yeah, I can I can bring that up. It'll take it'll take a minute, but I'll find it. While you're looking at that, can I ask the mid-block crossing, has anyone talked to the road commission about that? Because they don't love those. I know. <laughs> I know so they don't love them. So it's been planned for, but there's no permit. Has there been any feedback from them? Because, I, I mean, they're going to want signage. They're going to want striping. They're going to want all kinds of stuff. It's not just as simple as sticking it toward the road and letting it cross. I have not seen any correspondence from them, and maybe the applicant can comment on that when they okay. present. It's really a sight distance issue for signs and striping. It's not, if you meet the sight distance, it's not terribly difficult to get, but it's the sight distance that's... And this age. might not meet it because there is a crest of the hill further to the east. So uh, it might not, but it was, it is a, an option I think that should be explored by the applicant so that people who are utilizing the bike paths have a, a way to cross and a location designated for a safe crossing. So Okay. All right. Do you have, have anything you yeah. want to come on up and? I'm right where you are. <laughs> okay. Would you guys like to ask some questions or come on up to the podium and name an address for the record? And well, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Dwayne Bennett. I'm the president of Bennett Enterprises and the project manager for Lantech Consultants. We prepared almost all the plans that you have in front of you. I'm here on behalf of Arkin Light and Erwin J. Arkin, who Mr. Arkin is right here. Um, I, I have a, if you want me to do a PowerPoint, I can do a quick one. It's basically just copies of the drawings that are in front of you. Um, I've got PDFs on here if you want me to pull them up on the screen. And I have, m most of them I have on boards. I don't know if that's acceptable or not, but. I think it'd be helpful for people For review here. purposes. We will have them, have we? Oh, you're good.
I think all you have to do is hit the button on the front of the um, projector. The projector. Yep. For future construction. She's got to get her sunglasses. Give it one more. <laughs> and make her move back. One, one more hit. One more. Mm -hmm. One more hit. I hear it. Maybe, maybe not. Hit it one more time then. One more? Yep. Oh, there, there it is. There you go. It's going. You think? There it is. Okay. Now, the computer in the upper left corner should be on. They're probably timed out. Yep, that one. Yep. <coughs> there, some. Just click on that middle. That good. Okay. Okay, so we want to... Okay, your device is ready. slideshow and play and the burgundy on the top up oh, over here? yeah play from beginning <laughs> control into the arc and light, Erwin arc, and you may recall uh, the, this, the composite property is some of it's owned by Mr. Arkin himself under his LLC, some of it's owned by arc and light. Uh, there's your map. Whoa. Well, you know where it is. Uh, the submittal history. Uh, the only thing I would say about the, the time on the submittal history, I know this all seems extremely bizarre. It's taken us so long to get back. Uh, we had some issues with consumers on this one also. Um, interior issues with consumers. The gas crossing right here. I'm sorry, I didn't bring a laser pointer. I apologize. I was. Um, <coughs> sufficient to cover the full cost of the construction. You can see the dotted line cutting through the middle right here. Mm -hmm. This is where the gas line cut bisects the property. We had issues with consumers on this road crossing. Um, they weren't, there were issues weren't any, oh, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. they weren't really any issues of any consequence other than it takes consumers a million years to make a decision on anything. Mm -hmm. Um, like the DEQ. Yeah, just like the DEQ. Uh, it, it, and we have, we have approvals from, we have approvals from the DE, or <laughs> we have approvals from consumers on the crossing. We've worked everything out with them. The final documents have to be signed, but it's all approved by them, and I can show you letters from them. Um, and uh, the thing that, this is the area that, um, in Patrick's letter, where he talked about where he'd, we had made changes to the plan. Um, essentially, they're mostly confined to Unit 5 is right here. Unit 5, the, the limits of Unit 5 used to extend all the way to the 60-foot right away for line, nine mile road. <clears throat> Part of the comments that we did receive from the Planning Commission was is that, well, you know, that's okay, but it would be nice if there could be a little bit more screening from the right of way to not to the house. So what we did on the original plan, this little strip right here on the back of Unit 5 is not there. We had one open space here and an open space here. So we took a 20-foot strip. Uh, and just took it out of the rear of lot five, and then you'll see on the landscape plan we've added a bunch of plantings in that strip. Uh, the other thing that we did is we left the 35-foot setback measurement from the right-of-way line. Uh, 
Um, that was, again, that was something that we worked out with the Planning Commission. The other issue with the Planning Commission was the site 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 driveways on 9 and 10, which is right here. Um, on your plan, you can probably see it. There's a big note up here now that says a six foot side yard will be uh, will be maintained from both on both lot lines, so there'll be 12 feet between driveway. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's on that plan right here, and it's also in the proposed unit data. We've also put it at basically it's that same note that's right in the unit data. So there's not going to be any question about it. <coughs> someone's not going to be able to come back and say, hey, we didn't know about this. The rest of the plan is pretty much as it always was. Can I just click at these things? Yeah. You should be. Just hit the right arrow. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I can do it. There we go. <clears throat> um, the net open space overlay. Uh, again, the only change to all these calculations and the percentages and everything was that just that little strip behind lot five. Everything else remains the same. All the net calculations for open space were excluding the stormwater basins. We included all the wetlands. You can see, again, you can see on your plan uh, all the hatching and the areas are broken down in through here with the total and the percentage. Uh, this is a composite utility plan. Another one of the reasons it takes a long time is to get all the engineering done. The composite, the, the construction plans were done by Siebert Keist. They're our engineering partner. I'm sure you're familiar with them. They do tons of work in Lyon Township. Leslie has uh, done one review of the engineering plans already, and I think we're kind of in the middle of a second review. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary here. We have a DEQ permit. Um, there's really no wetland disturbance on this site. Uh, the only reason that we have a DEQ permit is a discharge from the stormwater basins. Again, engineering, all that's uh, pretty well taken care of. Not to put words in his mouth. But we do have a DEQ permit. Uh, there was a very, very minor fill of a little wetland pocket within the nine mile road right away. There was a little low area there. That was part of the DEQ permit. That's all been permitted. You can see, you know, all the wetlands and the pink is the buffers stayed out of all those. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is the the woodland overlay. Um, obviously, yeah, I think. You, most of you are probably relatively familiar with this. This whole area back in here, the part that isn't wetlands, is heavily wooded. Really nice. Uh, you may remember we had an original plan where the road went back there and we were going to put a cul-de-sac back there, but that all went by the wayside what seems like 20 years ago. Um, there are detailed um, tree plants in the set and the tree list. Those are not included in here. PDFs if you didn't want to discuss those at all. Um, the, the nine mile paving. Um, you know, obviously one of our big things on here was the paving was the paving of nine mile. Uh, this is the woodlands, the other development for Arc and Light, which of course has been in place for quite some time. And I believe you all know we're picking up down here. We're going to pave Nine Mile Road. About, about a half a mile of Nine Mile Road gets paved from where it currently ends, uh, about 400 feet in from Griswold. That's all going to get paved. It gets paved. Uh, it's asphalt. Some of it's curb. Some of it just has gutters. It gets paved all the way up to here, which obviously includes the frontage of the meadows. It gets paved all the way beyond the boulevard entrance to the Woodlands of Lyon, up through the tapers that are required by the Road Commission. And then because of the, I, some of you probably recall, there's a pretty large hill here. Um, the hill was a big issue when we did the woodlands. Uh, you may remember we had literally a year and a half of back and forth between the road commission because the, there's a consumer's pipeline that cuts underneath Nine Mile right here. It mm -hmm. runs like this, it cuts under Nine Mile, and then it goes like this. 
and there was considerable issues between the road commission and consumers about the design of the hill. I'm only going through this, it goes to site distance. So we spent literally a year and a half waiting for the road commission and consumers to decide which way they wanted to go on that. It finally got resolved, I suppose, in everyone's best interest where the road commission said to consumers, if you guys have to lower your gas pipeline because these guys have to lower the hill for site distance, that's what you're gonna have to do. That's all in writing, that was all approved. That was all approved back in, um, in April. March of 2016, it was approved by the road commission. So anyway, obviously we have paved frontage, half a mile road, and then we're doing a little bit, I think it's about 300 feet of gra new gravel from here, essentially to where Cattail's driveway currently is, again, because we're shaving that hill down. So between the, between the shaving of the hill that gets done in, on top of in here, from about here to here, and then the new grading just to go back and match the gra gravel road. Um, This one. Uh, this one, I only show this as a means of, you know, just a kind of a refresher. I can probably all remember this. I know it's been a while. Uh, this is the meadows. This is the property line from the meadows. Here's our end cul-de-sac. Here's our entrance. This is. I still refer to it as a Clark property. I know that's probably not what it is anymore, but you all know the history of all this. You know, we had started, when we originally started all this, we tried to incorporate this, the Clark land into our land, and we had done a bunch of layouts where we tried to get back here to this upland, and we tried to use this upland, and the whole thing fell through, and I think we spent four, about $40,000 in a year and a half. We kind of, you may remember, we went through that a lot when we did the preliminary, we talked about the preliminary plan. Um, so I just kind of throw this in here because I went, we went through a lot of work and I really like to look at it. I, I know this has been used a couple times we've furnished this, but I think the original time we refurnished it was way back when ex-supervisor uh, Young was on the park board and you guys were doing studies around the township about potential land that might be suitable for parks. So I know we had provided this at that point in time and I think we provided, I think I gave it to Leslie about a year ago because when all this, when we did, when the water tower stuff came up, I think she used it for that. Uh, so that's pretty much it as far as the PowerPoint goes. Like I said, I mean, I have individual PDFs of all the sheets that you have there. So if there's another sheet that anybody has any individual questions on, I can go back to that. <clears throat> all right. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll open it up for a little bit of conversation. And uh, somebody want, have any questions for? Wayne? Yes. Sorry. Oh, anyone? Well, I guess my first question is this particular development, and I've said it in the past, has a 46% density bonus. And when people ask me when we approve these, with these kinds of, with any density bonus, what's the uh, community benefit for the township, especially when it comes to a 46% density bonus? You want me to revisit all that again? Okay, my, okay, I'm sorry, Anything I didn't mean to be beyond. flippant, I'm sorry. Well, we had this conversation during preliminary. Um, essentially, the paving of the road was a big issue, half a mile of paving on the road. And I'll stop you on that one because the paving of Nine Mile was cited in the Woodlands of Lyon as their community benefit. So that's where I have a disconnect on, you know, got two projects claiming the same community benefit. Well, the other thing that we did and it goes back to this, which is why I always throw this in, was we spent basically a year and a half trying to bring this property into our property and make it worthwhile. We did layouts. We, we did a whole presentation back then. I don't have all of it with me where I, we had showed like we spent like $40,000, all of the topographic information, all the wetland information that we obtained on that property, we basically paid for all that. It, we didn't ask the township to, to, to chip in on any of that, even though, and I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, when we first started all this and when we first started talking about trying to make this work, there was some gentleman's agreement, if you will, that we would get reimbursed for some of it, which we didn't and we never asked for it. So between the, the topographic work that we did, all the wetland work that we did, I think it was in excess of $40,000. Plus, we spent about a year and a half 
trying to make all this work before we realized it wasn't going to work. So from our perspective, uh, we, you know, we spent a lot of money trying to do it, take that property off your hands, make it workable. And we lost a, we lost a lot of time. Um, you know, we kind of missed out on, because we were trying to make this work, we sort of missed out on about a year and a half where we, all these things could have been done and potentially even built by this point in time. So I guess doing all that, how I mean, that's not a benefit to the community. I guess the survey and the wetland delineation on that piece would be, but just running plans through there and not making it work doesn't benefit the community at large. Well, um, I'd like to think that we should get credit for I the think fact we that we point tried of order to. Here. This is a final review. I have it's said time this. Time to bring up all this stuff. Hey, no, I've said that, this at every no, subsequent no review. Okay. The, every subsequent another, review. It's in the minutes. Wasn't there another uh, c benefit that they did on the other side that was uh, moving a road around? They, they were trying to work something out on the other side, too. That What was that? In the woodlands? Yeah. It, there was a, well, that something came, for the township. Well, the, this it was a, the SAD sewer. Um, I don't really. But you moved that. You moved that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, when the SAD sewer came through the woodlands, and you all know it, and it ends at Nine Mile Road, there was a lot of back and forth on layouts. We had done some initial layouts. Then Giffel sort of came in and said, well, you know, you're late. We can't really work with your layout because the grading isn't going to work, et cetera, et cetera. So we modified our layout to kind of incorporate what Givels was like it was more inclined to do with the sanitary sewer. That was number one. That took quite a bit of time. And then when the sanitary sewer actually went in, um, again, I've been around for a long time, like a lot of you, it took a long time for them. Well, number one, so when the alignment was all done, we had to wait. Then they went in and cleared all the trees, et cetera, et cetera. So part of on the Woodlands of Lion, we also, Irwin, we, pro down trouble, we also granted the easements to bring the sanitary sewer all the way from what is essentially the back line of uh, Stone Lay, if you will, or the Woodlands of Lyon, all the way through our property. So we spent a lot of time waiting for Giffels to get their plan together. We granted the easement and charged a dollar. Didn't, there was no charge to, you know, to, for the, to grant the easement so you guys could get that line all the way through there. And it's a half a mile of sanitary sewer. And then when they actually physically built the sewer, it was really, really wet that year, and the ground out there was really bad. And we, again, we had to, we sat around for literally a whole, probably from spring to fall, because it took them that long to get the sewer in. And then once the sewer was in, we had to go back in, re-topo a half a mile strip for the sewer construction because obviously there was lots of dirt removed, there was lots of trees removed. So then we had to upgrade the base topographic information on the woodlands before we could start doing engineering plans that corresponded the way that dirt was kind of sort of there, the way the sewer was in, the inverts on the sewer. So it all boiled down, I guess, to time. And not to be cliche, but the time is money. I mean, and we, we spent a lot of time waiting for all that stuff to get done. And in the meantime, we couldn't really move forward with the woodlands and then we couldn't really move forward with the meadows because we weren't sure what was going to happen on the nine mile road which again the township helped us on that whole hill thing i know patty went to bat for us leslie went to bat for us so we spent a lot of time waiting for things to happen many of them <coughs> the township asked us to spend time waiting for them to happen that was back in the day that was back in the day everything was falling apart and you know we had a lot of property to come back and i know that I know the board at that time asked them to do some favors on, on that piece of property. I know we that's did. fact. Um, so, I mean, they did do a lot of things for the town. Well, I think um, we beat this one to death, but you have to go back. They've probably been working on this since 2011. And I always feel that, in my opinion, the township is always fair. And back then, the 46% density bonus is not what it was back then either, Chris. That's not how we calculated lots back then. And this is development has been going on. And you can say what you are, but I have worked with Irwin on this <coughs> and the previous supervisor and, the, and, and um, some other board members. And this 
they have cooperated with us. They tried to make our property work our other property, which I also refer to as Doris Clark's parcel. <laughs> and, um, and every time they got to one step, it was something else. Okay, then they had a problem with the road. Then they had the problem with the, the, the gas easement. And it, so I feel that it's not a 46% density bonus because they were really before we calculated the way we calculate it today. And I think being fair is fair and that should not hinder them with that. That I just don't, I don't believe in that. And I, I'm certainly not gonna make well, my vote on that. you don't bring it up at the final. Well, and again, I should probably keep my mouth shut, but I'm gonna say it anyway, a 46% Sounds like death warmed lots. over when you use the net, but it's 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 11 units. It's 11 units above the parallel plan. It's not like our parallel plan shows 50 and we're asking for 100. The parallel plan had 24. We're asking for 35. It's an 11 unit increase that we always felt was pretty darn fair. I guess it's all relative. It's still math. The number is what the number is. It's 11 units. Can do the M&Ms. That's pretty. You had to be on the planning commission then. M&Ms? I don't get any M&Ms. No, when Elko brought the M&Ms in. Oh, I think poured it the, And did. he poured the M&Ms in the jar. He had a, I don't know how many M&Ms, and you couldn't tell the difference. So I, I'm just saying. I missed that. It's I'm, all relative. Sounds like a good snack. <laughs> Well, this is this is the first reading of the final. It has been approved through preliminary, so we are in a position now to uh, get this thing. Um, and, so, and again, Mr. O'Neill, you brought it the mid block, the mid block, <laughs> yeah, the mid block block crossing. I still can't say it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this if it's okay with everybody um, because it's it's bigger and it's a whole lot easier to see what's going on. I kind of blew this up. Um, the mid, this, the, the orange is, if you want me to turn it to the screen for a moment, I certainly can do that or however you want. The orange, of course, is the, is the bike path, okay? And then essentially, the bike path was gonna go straight, but as, again, because of the hill, there's this house, the existing house that's up here, it sits way up on the hill. The house is actually like this far off the 33 foot right away line. So originally, we had like a little S curve and we were gonna take the bike path and we showed it on the original preliminary plans, we showed it kind of zigzag into the 33 foot right away line. But then they also have a porch hanging off the front of the house and the bike path, I don't wanna say it was never gonna go anywhere, but it was gonna be like right up against the front of the house. And it goes way uphill there, if you're familiar with it. If not, take a look. The mid block, <laughs> I just can't say it. The <laughs> mid block crossing. Leslie actually brought up the mid block crossing in her preliminary review notes. It was, she was the one that, it was her suggestion that we might want to look into that because obviously it seemed like a good idea. This was not really practical, let alone ADA compliant. Um, and then of course the blue line is the bike path that's proposed in the Woodlands of Lyon. So this is, we went to this because the little S never made any sense. Plus this was always a, a good idea. We always liked that idea. Um, this, is, this is the paving that is, is approved on Nine Mile Road. At this point where this crossing takes place, there are curbs there. Some of it's curved, most of it's not. So essentially what we would have to do is, assuming that this is acceptable to everyone, we will have to go back to the Road Commission and probably just do a minor change to the Nine Mile Road paving plans to show, at the very least, we'll have to drop the curb where those bike, where those bike paths will meet that curb. So once this is okay with everyone, then we will go back to the Road Commission and talk to them about um, what needs to be done. Now, as far as sight distance goes, um, again, this is this is where the hill is, right up in here, and that's all going to get shaved down. So, sight distance, if you drive up and down Nine Mile Road, it's not going to look like that when this is all done. So, from a pedestrian standpoint, the distance from the crest of the hill, which is essentially at the middle of the boulevard for the woodlands, down to here, sight if you're paying attention as you're crossing the road with your kids or something, sight distance isn't going to be an issue. I mean, the sight distance will be acceptable so that the pedestrian is not going to get run over if they're crossing between those bikes. So what's your plan if RCOC does not approve that? 
I guess we would go, we would probably end it here and we'd be contributing the 50 for the 55 feet of bike path that can't really be built up the hill. And, and, and in essence, the crossing here, it's actually from, from where the little curve in the bike path, this is like, it's a 50 foot shortage, if you will. The amount of bike path that we're building from the curve to this side and then connecting here is actually about 62 feet. It's even a little bit longer than the 50 feet that we would that we wouldn't be building across the frontage. And the other thing I will just mention, not to change the subject, but this is the other, uh, this is the bike, this is the bike path across the meadows. This is where the woodlands ends. This is the section um, that we're going to be contributing to where you would ask about the, um, the boardwalk. Okay. Um, it's, it's right here. And in fact, I think it's even dimensioned on the, um, I think it's dimensioned on the layout plan. I think there's a number right on here. I believe it's 200, memory serves, it's 269 feet. Um, yes. Yeah, 269 feet from where it's going to end at the wetland buffer, and then from there to the property line would be 269 feet. Well, I do, I mean, I, I do like the crosswalk because if you don't put it there, kids are still going to, people are still going to cross there because there's no path, there would be no path in front of the house with the, with that's so close to nine miles. So I, I actually do prefer the crosswalk. I have, um, I just have a comment. Um, regarding the uh, the ten foot wide bike path, where it says that it will it will end at the wetland buffer, and the developer will contribute to the pathway fund the cost of the section over the wetland. And so I just wanted to confirm that in section four zero dash three four development fund option item B that the funds placed in the bicycle path and sidewalk development fund shall be sufficient to cover the full cost of the bicycle path or sidewalk construction as determined by the township building official or township engineer. So if I read that correctly, and I think we have read it correctly, that would be not the cost of an asphalt path, but the cost of what it would be for you to put in a boardwalk. Leslie, is that correct? And then funds placed in the bicycle path and sidewalk development fund fund shall be deposited by the township treasurer, interest bearing account, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess my question then to you is if you have to contribute the amount <laughs> of what it would cost, why don't you just do it? Because the DEQ would never approve it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, then I apologize. I don't believe the DEQ would ever approve it. And the other issue, I suppose, maybe the more germane issue. This is that, um, this, well, you know what it is. This is where it ends. This is where it would currently end, mm -hmm. right here. This, this, I've switched north there a lot, uh, yeah. This is where we cur where we currently end, so we've been doing this. this um, the, the problem, I suppose, maybe the DEQ would approve it, but they wouldn't approve a path. It would have to be a boardwalk. Right, but you would have to contribute the cost of the boardwalk. Well, it, I, we'll contribute whichever one you want. But the fact that trying to build it, and it's not just a wetland crossing, this is where the, the, there's the big ITC tower. Right here at our property corner is where one of those huge ITC towers is. And I know I'm jumping all over you. So it's, it's right here, and this, is, this whole 75 feet right in through here is, IT, is the ITC easement for their, for their overhead wires. They run all the way up and down here. There's a tower there. There's a, so, if the DEQ would approve a boardwalk, uh, again, I suppose that would be fine. Um, however, 
the boardwalk's just going to end. It's going to end in the middle of a wetland. Because once you get to this point, you know, that's our property line, then you've got more wetland on the Clark property. And if you Clark look property. at the, the right of way for Nine Mile Road, the frontage on the Clark property, yeah, almost all of it, where a path would normally be built is all, again, all wetlands. So my argument, I suppose, would be you want a boardwalk that basically goes to nowhere? And, uh, you know, I, I, I know this is going to sound self-serving. That Clark property is our, our property, and that's where we're currently putting the water tower right, right. now, too. Well, and, that, and that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, if, if, if you want us to pay money to build a boardwalk, you know, if one's more expensive than the other, obviously we'd like to contribute the lesser of the two. But if, if you think that a boardwalk there is, is, is a practical idea from a future standpoint and it's got the potential to be extended, then I wouldn't necessarily argue against a boardwalk. But if you look at some of the boardwalks that are in place on developments that have been around for a while, they don't hold up very well. Whose responsibility is it, Leslie, to maintain a boardwalk? The HOA? The HOA. And 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 this is a, it's a real it's a real live wetland. I mean, we're I, I know that sounds silly, but you know some wetlands are just kind of wet. It's a little bit sloshy. This is not like this. I mean, when you when you cross right into this area right in here, there's like a a, a pond. A standing water pond in this area. Uh, there's a there's a pond in through here. There's kind of a like a drainage ditch that runs kind of through the Clark property. That it's it's a real live wetland. And I believe me, drive out there and look for this tower, and you will see that the reeds or whatever that are they're literally 15 feet high. So, notwithstanding Leslie's comment, I won't argue to to try to get a permit from the DEQ to build a boardwalk through there is going to be impractical at best and I, I don't know how you would ever do it the physical construction of it because of the nature of the ground that's there I, I'll say impossible I, I, I'm, not to, I'm not disagreeing with her in principle it's just from a practical standpoint it just doesn't make any sense well, but I, I guess my I'm <clears throat> I'm always the one to say it's you know a sidewalk going to nowhere, and in this case, you we essentially have your sidewalk going to the east, that is going to cross over Nine Mile, so it's not actually on, on the south side of Nine Mile. It's yeah. not going to continue on the south side. It's going to jump to the north, and then you have a boardwalk or you have a bike path that stops at the wetland buffer. On the woodlands, yes. At the woodlands, which will then force people I mean the, it, it goes nowhere yeah because what, what again I don't have anything for the woodlands but it it's the same situation again once you get once you get to where we're stopping this one again um, yeah I don't have anything for the woodlands the wetland the, the wetland system that's on the woodlands in that area continues from that point and again we're talking live wetlands with a ditch goes all the way to um, is it Clarkshire, I think, which is beyond our property. And it, that wetland goes all the way up that whole half a mile. If you remember, it runs all the way through the woodlands. There's a stream that runs through the woodlands that we're crossing in a few places. Um, there's a significant amount of wetlands up in the north. And I'm just saying it's a giant system of wetlands that are all interconnected. And in fact, it even, it even connects into cattails. There's a big culvert underneath Nine Mile Road. You probably know. There's a big pond in Cat, and then there's all kinds of wetlands. So it's not just some little two-acre wetland pocket. Um, Leslie, do you have a suggestion for how to really? It just seems to me kind of. I, I never want to say no to a sidewalk. I'm just or a bike path. So I want to make that clear. It just seems like there would be a better option. That section would make sense to be built with. The, the frontage of the property that the township owns to build it all at one time. You're talking about going all the way down to Griswold, Leslie? Right. That would that would be more that would make more practical sense of when to construct it. So you're talking about like from here all the way? Yeah. Okay. The corner of nine and Griswold. 
So their contribution would take it to the edge of the Clark parcel, and then the township would, be, you're, I mean, if the township so desired to put something along nine mile, along nine mile, that's right by the water tower. Right. Is there a sidewalk that goes along Griswold that actually gets to nine mile? No. Nope. No. no. <laughs> oh my God. There's lots no. of wetlands on Griswold. You got the railroad the and the railroad crossing. Right. You got a few houses there too. Like two right. houses right. on there. <clears throat> I guess okay. I'm not adverse to contributing. I understand what you're saying, Lisa. I'm sorry, Ms. Blake. You can call me Lisa. That's all right. I understand right. what you're saying, and I don't fundamentally disagree with you. The only thing that I guess, and again, I don't mean to sound self. They can't get this to work, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound self-serving, but I hate to put, there's, I've, you see a lot of bike paths and they just deteriorate and I hate to put, I hate to make homeowners responsible for 270 feet of bike path through a wetland that I'm telling you three or four years from now, the, the bottom of it's, it's gonna be in water all the time and it's gonna rot and they're gonna have to replace all that. And then who do they, you know what they, they do? They come back and curse the person that proposed the bike path across their frontage because now they got to do a whatever they do to, amongst themselves, to, but whatever. I'm just trying to find a solution. So I'm, I'm asking. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I, I think there's going to be areas in the township where bike paths and they aren't going to be connected. I mean, I'm trying to figure out you're out in the middle of you know, kind of uh, an area here where there's no bike pass anywhere. I mean, where do you go? How, how do you continue? You have to figure out where you're going to end them. Are we going to end them in the city of South Lyon, go all the way up nine mile? You're talking about a long way. I'm just not sure where you take it, even yeah, if you get I, to Griswold. I'm not sure where you take it. That's why I thought this was an ideal situation for putting money into a fund to connect them on the other sides, the places that we can connect them. And this particular development may not have a sidewalk that connects it by a bike path. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially going to be its own little, uh, I don't want to say private, bike path across the frontages of both developments. But what is, okay, well, I mean, I... I'm sorry, I just, I, I don't... No, I've, I mean, I've got it on that. doesn't work like this, but... <laughs> Leslie, do you have a suggestion? But I, I, again, I, I guess from our perspective, if you decide whether it's now or 15 years from now that you think you, the township is going to build a bike path, whether it's a bike path or, or a, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, across the frontage of the Clark property and you want us to contribute monies for, um, geez, I'm so sorry, a, a, a boardwalk, boardwalk, then write it up as a boardwalk. I would agree that that makes sense, and I don't think we would. I, I don't think we'd have an issue with that, regardless of the cost. Well, it's easy for me to say I don't have to pay for it, but just from a practical standpoint. Million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> then we might. Have, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I've been working in this township a long time. I mean, I don't live here, but you know, I take a lot of pride in everything that we've done. We've done a lot of stuff in this place, and you know, if you think it makes sense that you're going to have a bike path sometime, or a boardwalk then write it up as a boardwalk. All right, well, let's let's move this forward. Is there com any other comments that uh, we'd like to make on this? Um, these two it? subs will have great water pressure. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, I know that was a concern for a while, wasn't it, mm -hmm. Leslie, as far as the water main connection? You know, I, what's going to happen here, I mean, it's like big brother, little brother. You know, the woodlands will, I don't know which one will get built first, because now if we have both of them in place, it gives us a little bit more flexibility. But the water main that connects, it connects up to the back of Stoneley, it runs all the way down through the woodlands, it comes all the way across Nine Mile, and it comes down here. Well, actually, then there's an existing water main already in place on the north side of Nine Mile. So the metals will connect to that. But you know, on the woodlands, we're building a half a mile, a 16 inch water main all the way up to the bottom of the hill as you hide up to the, for cat, well, you know. So it seems like it's gonna really help the system too, interlink everything. I have 
th- three other comments. Two, I, I know the answers to, but number one, based on your traffic impact study, it suggests a, uh, a signal at nine mile in Griswold is warranted. As part of this project, would you be willing to contribute toward that signal? No. Uh, number two, we, know, we have an ordinance that states that our maximum dead end length of a cul de sac is 660 feet. We know the one in the back is exceeds that. It's at 750, even if you count the stub road to the east. Um, I assume that layout has been set based on preliminary plan approval. So that, that layout is based on numerous changes. Oh, absolutely. I've and been I know, present. I know you know that. Present from all of them since the very beginning on planning commission. Isn't it? Isn't it from? Isn't it from here to here, Chris? Isn't it like 700? It's about 750. Seven, yeah. Yeah. It's so it's like over it's like 70 feet over I think um, and then the last one um, it kind of ties into our earlier discussion tonight is lot 5 now has a 15 foot rear setback how is that going to be addressed as far as decks pools and patios yeah I figured that would probably come up when you here, here's for what it's worth as a planner so to speak for my suggestion would be the the deck restrictions that you're talking about put them in the PD agreement I, I, not to make Patrick's job any more difficult, but, you know, because we have a 35-foot rear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the question, I think Lisa brought this up, well, how, you know, how are we going to know and how are we going to control? Add a section to the PD agreement that says, you know, these, this, these does have a 35, I'm, you're shaking your head, Patty. Oh, no, I oh, Okay, <laughs> I didn't want to oh, jump. No, no, I, I was, mean, this is my suggestion. Hey, put something in the PD, in each individual, and I can't, you know, for subdivision stuff, that's up to you, but in a PD agreement, just put a section in there that says, you know, these have, however you want to do it, 35 foot setback, and your deck can only go into the setback, whatever it was you decided. Because again, just, just like with the whole, um, the whole driveway thing, no one's ever going to be able to come back and say, well, what do you mean I can't build a 50 foot deck? It's like, well, it's in the PD agreement. I mean, I guess, and I, you know, I don't know if it's the PD the agreement gets incorporated in the master deed. I think it gets referenced at the very least. Yes, it does. So there it is. So I guess on the, in particular on lot five, I, the amendment we passed said you can have a deck, but it, you still have to maintain a 10 foot setback from the rear property line. So that means the deck in lot five on that one, on half of it would be five feet. Yeah, this section right through here. Right, could only be five feet right. out from the house, but the other side um, could then be what, twenty-five feet? Um, yeah, that's a stand. That's the standard. That's the standard. Five over there. So in essence, I suppose this one would be limited to where they could only build. Uh, You'd only build. You know, we're going thirty-five feet from the right of way, twenty foot of open space. There's a fifteen foot, so they would only be able to build uh, twelve. Mm -hmm. Again. That's all going to be landscaped. Right. So it's not like they're building it right up against the bike path. But I mean, what we could, again, there, some kind of restriction could be put there in place so that everybody knows what they can do. But maybe for that, that particular, I think you're right, put it in the PD agreement just so there's no confusion. That's just my own personal opinion <laughs> for what it's worth. That's a, I mean, you know, it's from a planning value. perspective, I think it's important. If, it's very, you guys know this, it's very, if these people are already confused and, you know, yep. and then you don't have any problem. Every PD agreement's going to have that stipulation in there, including ours, because ours is underway. I know obviously the Woodlands isn't, but that would go back to your ordinance. So make everybody's life easier, I think. Anyone else have anything? Anyone? Motion be in order. Anybody want to make a motion? I will. I'll make a motion to approve AP-13-31 for the Meadows of Lyon Plan Development Final Plan Review um, as submitted with a deed restriction on Lot 5 as far as the deck. Chris, is that what you wanted, the placement of the deck? Yes. And this would be the first reading. I should second that. But do you want to refer to the letters? Oh, I... Yes, thank you. Um, including the letter of McKenna, June 26, 2018. CES, June CES, June 28, 2018. And that's all I see. What's the contribution for the so second boardwalk? Well, that, I think that's already in the thing. They have to put one or the boardwalk. other in. I can't. Okay. Well, I mean, just to reference section 
forty dash thirty four. The the requirement is for as far as the contribution. I can do that. I can add that to my motion. Are we so good on the support, John? With the I second it. Yes. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a support. Uh, let's call this one by roll. Sean O'Neill? No. Lisa Blades? No. Christopher Enlow? No. John Dolan? Yes. Michelle Cash? Yes. John Hicks? Yes. Patricia Carcom? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, I, I think, well, I won't discuss it now. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, consideration of adoption of the ordinance uh, minimum lot area acceptable to hobby farms. This again is a text amendment and it is housekeeping to clear that up. Anyone want to ask any questions about that or are we comfortable with making that motion? To be clear, just for anyone who might be concerned, uh, if they're operating a hobby farm mm -hmm. with a half acre lot, Per the ordinance, this does not change their ability to continue to do so because they'd be legal not conforming, correct? That's correct. If they Are were, any? Um, when the uh, original amendments were done uh, last year, uh, the intent was to make it an acre. So <coughs> any uh, hobby farm existing that was legal non conforming at that time and continues in existence is not changed by this. So anyone who would be concerned about this, if they're in compliance today, they'll be in compliance if this is enacted going forward. Cannot have half a cow. <laughs> Not without a freezer this time of year. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion I, to. Uh, well, I, I actually had some questions Go ahead. before. Um, so I remember that this dated back to uh, 2011, and um, we had some discussion about that when I was on the planning commission. And um, I guess too, I'm looking at the. Uh, you know, the one acre came from, I believe it was, I think, in 2014, although, Chris, I think you might have been on the Planning Commission then, where this was dealing with agribusiness, um, but not necessarily hobby farms. Is that? Is that it was, 2012 was the agribusiness. I, this kind of ties into the, the 2014 amendments. I could not find the 2014 amendments, Patrick, and, you know, I don't, I have a lot of stuff on here, but I don't know if I had that one. So I, I was actually had questions on how this kind of came together because I remember talking, defining hobby farms in 2012 when it was the agritourism that we did for, uh, I, I mean, that was obviously with Chris Dusen, but we did that for Irwin's and some of the roadside um, markets that, that pop up seasonally. Um, but I, I guess I didn't recall what happened in 2014. And I didn't recall having an acreage in 2012. So that was where I have a kind of a gap in and knowledge I couldn't find what happened in 2014 and, and we can look through that um, I, I do know that one of the reasons that we have this original discrepancy is that um, in 2014 one of the drafts at the time um, had a half acre for hobby farms and during the review process of the Planning Commission that was increased to one acre and so every part of the amendment got increased to one acre except this one area that we're working on right now to, to correct. Uh, but where that was coming from, uh, up to an acre, I don't have that in front of me right now. But I can, I can look it up from 2014 where we started. Okay. Well, and I guess, you know, the, the people who I know who do have chickens are actually in uh, lots that are uh, one acre. And I guess my, my thought is there, there are really not a whole lot of uh, parcels based on what I can see in the zoning map that are zoned as half acre lots. Although I know that you can have mo you can have more than a half acre in a half where it's zoned as half acre lots. And so I was wondering, really, without having to go through an entire inventory of every lot in our township, um, if there would be any um, people who might be interested in. Um, and having chickens, if they're even just slightly under one acre, then they're, you know, maybe if they're, you know, 0.75, now they still, they can't have that. Um, and I was wondering if, like some locations, such as the city of Holland, will have a maximum of four chickens for a half acre or less, a maximum of five chickens for a half an acre to one acre, and then a maximum of six for one acre or more. And so I know that this was all hashed out at the planning commission level, but um, I guess my concern is, is there a way that we could, or even if it's a um, like a step-down situation, like 
the city of Holland has or to accommodate the people who are at a half acre to an acre. Um, I, can't, I feel like the distance requirements for um, the distance to building structures um, shall not be located in any front yard, set back 30 feet from all property lines, set back 100 feet from dwellings on neighboring properties. Those, those setbacks and distances kind of take care of themselves whether or not you're on a half an acre or an acre. Um, and so I just was wondering if there might be anybody or any flexibility for that half an acre to an acre gray area or you know can we have it where it's an application for just for chickens or you're going with goats and sheep and everything else and pigs um i was because i, I well, how I, noisy how noisy are we talking with neighbors and less well, than half an acre or a half an acre i guess i was really focusing more on the chickens ducks and pigeons uh geese and peacocks although peacocks they're can be noisy. kind of they're noisy yes they are <laughs> they're all um, noisy so maybe I, maybe I was just looking more because I see I see more people keeping chickens um, for fresh eggs for themselves more so than somebody wanting to keep mm -hmm. geese peacocks rabbits goats and sheep so I guess I was looking focusing more on the, the half acre for the um, for chickens ducks and pigeons <laughs> and to clarify no roosters um, I really don't think that pigs and and goats I, I, that's not what I was considering, but I'm, yeah, I know, but that's what it's looking at, right? But <laughs> so that's what I mean. You like, don't consider it. This one's going to come yeah, up exactly. With that. <laughs> so I, I was just wondering if there could be some flexibility as far as the um, not in all hobby farms, but at least in some of these um, where I would agree that peacocks are really, really. Loud. Mm -hmm. um, we got to keep track of that. Just having a bit of flexibility with that Real first item. The only thing is the problem is is if we have one. Or one ordinance that's one acre right we have to mandate this right so so the thing you know it's about the horses and then it's about the chickens right. and it's about i mean if you're going to have those kind of animals i think you should be on one acre we had a long discussion at the planning commission and especially peacocks and um horses cattle all that stuff so we we have to mandate that here so right i mean it just I just I, I think it should be an acre but Patrick uh, should there be a reference to the right to farm act and the gaps for maintenance of these animals I mean it talks about how we're going to keep them but there there isn't any language tying that together and I would say that if we're calling this a hobby farm wouldn't it then allow someone to assert an argument for uh, the right to farm act superseding some of our restrictions I think they would if um, if they're in a district like the like the residential agriculture district where um, agriculture is a principal permitted use. So um, if they're doing commercial ag, uh, these regulations might not apply to them because they may assert right to farm where it's a permitted use. Okay. And hobby farms are defined as non-commercial, uh, so the gaps wouldn't wouldn't apply. Okay. I, I mean, I like I said, I I am hung. I know I'm hung up on the whole uh, first line of the chickens, ducks, and pigeons. But I do know, out of as far as hobby farms, there are out of the people who I know who do raise chickens and have them for uh, for their own family use. But they're I, grandfathered in now. Right, but if there's somebody who does have um, who is interested in doing that. <laughs> They need, I would like start soon. they need an acre. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just because they're not. One month and one week from. I guess if, if we're looking at moving this to one acre, I would just suggest that the table be converted to number of animals per acre as opposed to number of animals per half acre. It's, a it's a little confusing. It's confusing. I can do the math, but, you know. Right, especially when John was talking about his John half of, right. I struggle <laughs> so clearly. Uh, the, his half a cow is, I'm guessing, John, a result of the fact that it says you get a half of a cow with your one acre. So <laughs> wondering how, yeah, I think we should deal with full units of animals as well. 
And uh, I think the reason that that remained, it, it started at the half acre and uh, at the very bottom in subsection G, uh, where it states hobby farm shall have a minimum lot size of one acre. I think that was added um, and, and then the amendment went through. And then they also uh, included in the table itself uh, by cattle and horses that um, it's a one acre minimum. So um, depending on how many half acres they have, so they don't have to get a whole acre before they get um, you know, another animal. Like for example, if we look at the rabbits, uh, they get 10 for the first, um, uh, you know, the first half acre, but they need one acre. So once they have the first acre, they have 20, and then one and a half acres, they get another 10. Um, so the table is just to show the increments. Once you're above an acre, um, you get additional animals that are calculated on the half acre. And uh, the cattle and horses don't really uh, pencil out, but the other animals, they, they do. I'm under the impression that our ordinance right now says you must have a minimum of two acres for a horse. Uh, for a hobby farm, uh, they would need one. I think it's one acre open pasture. What's that? I think it's one acre open pasture for a horse. For a horse. Well, so, for your first horse. So it really should be more than one acre minimum because you can't have a house, uh, you can't have a hobby farm unless you live there, and you can't have a house with all that other stuff and still have a one acre paddock area. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of. <clears throat> In conflict. So if I have an acre, I can double all of the numbers of these animals, except for cattle and horses. I double it. So you have one, right? Yeah, one so one acre one. you get uh, so one I could have one horse. Ten, ten chickens, ducks, or pigeons, plus six geese or peacocks, plus twenty rabbits, I've plus six goats, meat. sheep, llamas, alpacas, plus two pigs, a, ca a cow, and a horse on one acre. There's no, there's no requirement to not have tip? all. You can have all of these. So if you have an acre and you want to go crazy, and so the state can't come in and say, well, the GAMP supply to you, you can't maintain these animals in this way. But we could, we could have I don't think this is 40 animals or 30 some odd animals on I don't one think acre. That's possible. I'm just saying because somebody's going to do it. I think somebody's going to do it. And I, I mean, I'm all for having animals and keeping them, but I don't know. There's a lot of them. You won't even have a dog, Sean. So that's true. <laughs> I'm all for other people having Don't animals. Don't get your kids a dog? No, I... <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. It's, uh, <laughs> Shame on you. I know. You're not the only and, uh, one. At some point, it'll become clearly, a capacity yeah. issue with setbacks and having them in the rear yard. They can't be in the front yard, and they have to meet so many setbacks. So um, at some point, so it might it. get to overcrowding, but <laughs> you think? the point is taken. Okay, so what do we want to do? A newer has to be something. <laughs> Yeah, maneuver 75 feet, That's but look how far our wastewater treatment plant is away from Hardy, and it still smells. <laughs> so we well, when the wind blows out of the east. Yeah. Thanks to the awesome design. <laughs> it's a great design. Is this first reading? Going in. Yep. First reading. Ready for a motion? Mm -hmm. Is everybody satisfied for the first reading, or you want to change some language in here? Or? No. I just have to add, did anyone show up at the Planning Commission? No. Uh, to talk about this? No. Okay. No, no, no comments in the public hearing? No. Okay. So to be clear, the current ordinance says all of these things now. It just says you can do it on a half acre instead of one acre. Basically. Right. Um, and the reason this came up is uh, the question came to the ordinance officer where um, he noted a discrepancy where subsection G, it explicitly states that hobby firms have a minimum lot size of one acre, but then in uh, subsection A, we had um, uh, what was a relic of the half acre um, that was supposed to be moved out of that draft back in 2014 when it was increased to one acre, but it never did. And so we had two conflicting areas of the ordinance and where there's a conflict, the more restrictive one prevails. So we've been administering it as a one acre consistent with what was adopted in 2014. But um, when this discrepancy was noted in subsection A, um, our proposal was to make it consistent with what was adopted in 2014. Okay, and just to be clear, the only thing that's really going to change is that you you need an acre. Yep. Currently says a half, and there's some conflict about with it. So this is making it an acre. It's clearing that up. Correct. So it's okay. So it sounds like the 2014 because I I have the 2012 open as well. The 2012 is basically the same thing with you know section A saying one half an acre, but there is no section 
G, which says one acre. So I assume 2014, which you'll provide at the next reading, will have the addition of the one acre, which would be G, and A just it didn't get changed. Didn't get changed. Yeah, yeah, that makes yeah sense. And there, and I think were, that's how I've deduced it. <laughs> yeah, there were about, uh, and, and I looked on our server too, there were about six or seven different um, back and forth because it dealt with more than just hobby farms. It was a lot of agritourism. So um, at one of those, it was changed to an acre. And um, the next meeting, I'll, I'll note when that happened and why. Okay. Okay. Anybody, any other comments? Yeah. A motion be in order. First reading. Make a motion to move AP 1826, which is Ordinance 198-18, to second reading. I support with the addition of the changing of the chart to be based on one acre. I'll accept. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. And John. <laughs> he didn't hear it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Jim Lee? Yeah, yeah, we should. Yes. John, are you a yes or no on that vote? <laughs> Still in sure. <laughs> you in support of that? Yes? Okay. All right, moving on. Consider the adoption of an ordinance to amend the materials used for screening of trash dump dumpsters, and this is eliminating wood. I'll make a motion to move text amendment, text amendment AP 18-27, which is ordinance 199-18 to second reading. I'll support with a comment that we should rename this the Jim Chuck ordinance. I agree. I agree. <laughs> He, uh, every, every, ever since he was on planning commission, every single commercial development that had a dumpster, he would ask for this. So, if he's willing to have uh, his name on it, uh, you can you can put that in there. No, it's it's a good it's a good, it's thing. A good thing. Yeah, upgrades the dumpster enclosures yeah, so they does. don't look all yeah. ratty. Right. Okay, we have a motion and a support. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Uh, this is the consideration to purchase a zero-turn lawnmower for our maintenance department. And basically, I went out and I got some uh, prices together on some zero-turn lawnmowers. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this to you and asking you for this is we've taken over a large um, section of mowing in our DPW department, Bob at the helm. And we found that the, the mower that we have purchased, the snow machine and the mower and the multi-purpose machine works extremely well, but the deck is so large on it, it, it works really well for uh, large areas, but then when we get to places like ring roads where we have to get in between trees and curbs, it falls off the side and becomes very dangerous. So that uh, took out the option to do the mowing there, so we had to contract that out. But that's very common for. Pardon me. That's very common oh, yes. for a mowing company, if you will. They have different equipment for different areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That's what we're trying to do. Right, and yeah. and we are uh, equipping this uh, this part of our uh, our DPW to really work really well. We have a, a few string trimmers, we have some blowers, uh, we have a trailer that we haul the mower around on, and the trailer is large enough to add another machine in the back of it that would really help with our, that would take us to the next level. And basically these, these three mowers that I got some quotes on are the, these are not the top end commercial, these are the mid-grade commercials. These are, um, there's one above these that runs about 10,000. And each one of these have a $10,000 mower. These are just the mid-grade mid -grade commercial mowers. If you notice, we're looking at a 48-inch deck, and the reason we're looking at a 48-inch deck is it also will get between the gravestones and the graveyards to help us cut them down the road. We want to start taking on the maintenance there also. That may be next year. And so this, this mower would really help us uh, get through the summer, the rest of the grass cutting this summer. So if you look at these, the John Deere mower was the most expensive. Um, the Weingarts mower was the next one, and then the Speed Nation uh, Husqvarna was the third. They're all very comparable. Um, with my opinion, is the X Marks is probably the top of the line. 
in, in this, but I, I don't think the Husqvarna would be a bad buy either. I think it's they're all very good machines. Yeah, it's, it's not the bigger. 48. We will get that one. He has to special order the 48. The 48 is a little smaller than they usually sell on these commercial the mowers. The other two had them. And I think you wanted the wine What uh, I think. Can you explain where it says the uh, the warranty, 36 months or 1,200 hours, first 24 months, no hour limit? What? Well, they'll give you two years with no hour. You could use it, you know, 10,000 hours. As long as it's under two years, they'll, they'll okay. warranty it. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones will give you hours or a yearly warranty. That's either comes first. Mm -hmm. And is this, uh, the John Deere, is that through Bader & Sons? Yes. The that, the John Deere and the Speed Nation purchase would both be township purchases. The Wine Guards is Farmington, and the X Mark is the Farmington. I, I don't think we could go wrong with any one of these mowers, to be honest with you. I thought you favored the Wine Guard. I like the X Marks, and the only reason I like the X Mark is it's a it's a really if you if you watch any commercial lawn mowing company, that's all they have on their trailers. They they use X Marks. Um, but I think for what we're going to use them for, we're going to use them a lot. I think all of these would stand up very well. So that's that's why I'm looking. Anybody have any Bob, thoughts about buying them more? Who's driving it? We have. Everybody gets we a turn. driving it. Everybody gets a turn. <laughs> Once I get my arm working. <laughs> okay. So the X Mark's got a better warranty. Yep. Yep. Uh, it looks like it's got heavy duty air cleaner. It's, it's got a, a bigger fuel it's tank. It's a great unit. I mean, uh, it's a few hundred, that's $500 more. It's top of the line, though. They, but, are, they are. But it looks like it has some more options. Um, Did you say the X Mark has a better warranty or the. The X Mark, I'm comparing the lowest two. Got it. The Husqvarna and the X Mark. Is the Husqvarna, it's priced at 52 inch. Would that price come down with a 48? I think so, yeah. And that won't be much. They're very they're very close. Okay. It could be a hundred dollars or so. They'll be very close. Hmm? Everybody uses the line guards. What's in the township? Yeah. I think either any one of these would be perfect. I really do. Speed Nation, the one on they're over across from the trail. Heinz Park. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yep. And I, I, we don't own a commercial um, zero turn, but we have a zero turn from uh, a John Deere, and it holds up pretty, uh, pretty well. Although it's not doing the same level of what you're planning to do, but I, I like the uh, the warranty on the John Deere. That even though it's the 36 months or the 1,200 hours, I mean, what's when you go to four years with a uh, with Weingarts or a, a thousand hours? I feel like the John Deere we might hit we might hit it by the hours before we hit it with the months. But you can look at the, the John Deere's considerably higher too. Right. And I'll tell you, I'll be honest. The, all three of these mowers, I physically went out, looked at them, sat on them. Very commercial. All three of them, super commercial mowers. The next mark, I take it that six five one is a Kawasaki. Yes. Yeah. It's a Kawasaki. As a matter of and fact, I think all three have Kawasaki. Bob, sir, do you have this? Bob, do you have a? Well, all I can, I've owned, not owned, but purchased from the last place, uh, both John Deere and X Marks, and we kept moving more towards the X Mark later in our when I was there, just because they were very dependable. And what John said. When you drive around and look at people that do it professionally, you see more and more and more of these all the time, and there's a reason why. Yeah. Yeah. You want a motion? It has a seven. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 uh, anyone? Uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve the Wine Guards X Mark Radius X Series 651 cow for the cost of $6,159. Support. Motion and a support for the X marks from Wine Guards. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Great. All right, moving on to the consideration of the Park Advisory Board recommendation to update the Parks and Rec Master Plan outlined in the McKenna letter proposed for the amount not to exceed 9000 
Make a motion to table this until the August meeting. Okay. I'll support. support. Okay, we have a table and a support. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> okay, table till the next meeting. Moving on to the consideration of the Lyon Township Personnel <laughs> Policy and Procedural Manual. And on this, I'd like to say, um, it's 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 a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty thick policy manual, and we, did everyone have a chance to go through it? I know yes. that you had some some thoughts about it, and John, I went through it thoroughly. <laughs> did you? I did. I got marks. Um, Thank you. Well, Patty had an idea, and I'm going to let her go ahead and pitch the idea. Well, I was thinking that maybe we could just have a subcommittee to look over the policies and procedures. I actually worked on the first one that um, that we've, the, our latest one, I should say, and it was myself, Brent Hemker, and Troy Schilling. And um, I honestly have not had time to look at it. I, I, so I'm sorry, I'm just being honest. I have been so busy with taxes and the water situation, and um, I'd be happy to sit on the subcommittee if, um, and I know Chris mentioned he might, or Lisa. Yeah. Wait, I know Lisa said there was some grammar stuff and you punctuations and all that kind of stuff. Now, so I was thinking if we just had a subcommittee, we could bring it back with a recommendation and then everybody doesn't have to go crazy. Sounds I good. think that I'm a one full-time person here and then if yeah, the other two were, would assist me or if Michelle, I know Michelle's busy with her. You want a motion? I already did my whole book, so you guys can just you take it. Do that, Lisa? <laughs> like it. Well, I, yeah, I, I would be willing to... Um, to work on a subcommittee, is there anybody aside from any kind of like typos or grammar errors? Are there any uh, can, comments that yes you would want us? And we'll, we'll take Michelle's book or anybody else if they yeah. have. Yeah, I wrote a bunch of stuff. So you can um, slide it over to Patty then. I'll make yeah. a motion that we create a subcommittee that uh, Patty, Lisa, and Chris sit on, and then table consideration of the personnel uh, policies and procedures manual until such time as the subcommittee mm -hmm. makes a recommendation. Great. I'll, I'll support that. All right, we have a motion to support to the, have a subcommittee look at the personnel policy with Chris, Patty, and Lise. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Moving that on. Make like a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Support. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.